Now, here's your hosts, Nick Del Santo and Dwayne Russell. Hello and welcome to the 2021 AFL Draft. We're live from Docklands, from Marvel Stadium. Great to have your company wherever you might be listening. We're here for tyre power. Tyre power, the number one draft pick for tyre safety and protecting you on the road Tire power. We're an hour away from finding out the number one pick. We're probably not really an hour away. We know North Melbourne's going to take <laughs> Jason Horn Francis, but then we'll find out what the Giants do with pick two and then what the Gold Coast do with pick three. Adelaide has pick four, Hawthorne pick five, Fremantle six, Richmond seven, Fremantle eight, St Kilda nine, West Coast ten, Essendon eleven, Port twelve, Giants thirteen, Brisbane fourteen, Richmond fifteen, Sydney sixteen. Melbourne 17 and Brisbane 18. We will get the first round done tonight and we'll bring it to you live, including the audio from Fox Footy when Gil McLaughlin steps up to uh, read out the names and have a chat. We'll take the interviews. We'll take the whole lot. We're here for three hours and it's great to have your company for Tyre Power. The second round is on tomorrow night. I mentioned the first round tonight, 18 picks, but if Sam Darcy does go tonight, which we expect him to go tonight, especially early, uh, maybe in the first two picks or third pick. Uh, and if Nick Dacos does go tonight, and he will go tonight as well in the first couple of picks, then we'll get 20 picks done tonight. So it is great to have your company. You can join us any time if you'd like to. one 736 736 is the open line. one 736 736 I want to take you back to the 2001 draft before I introduce my friend... Pick one was Luke Hodge. Pick two, Luke Ball. Pick three, Chris Judd. Pick four, Graham Polak. Then Xavier Clark, Ashley Sampy, David Hale, Jimmy Bartell. Uh, my co-host was probably getting a little nervous at this stage. Luke Molan went pick nine. Sam Power picked ten. Gee, what a draft. Richard Cole pick 11. Brent Riley picked 12. And then at pick 13, Nick Dalsado who ended up playing 322 games and uh, ended up having a fantastic career. Welcome to you, Nick. Great to have you on. Good evening to you, Duane. Good evening to everybody. Hope you are really looking forward to the start of some young men's careers as we sit here um, in a lot of anticipation. It's actually a weird feeling as we walk through and the, the players aren't here tonight. We're at Marvel Stadium, so it's a little bit of a disrupted mm. or disjointed structure tonight for, for obvious, uh, obvious reasons. But the players are at the London Tavern. The management are at the London Tavern, yet all the football clubs and all the <laughs> formalities will be here at Marvel Stadium. We're setting, set up here. All the coaches' boxes, are, as I can see, are around, are blacked out. So they have uh, taken the capacity. 18 clubs are spread out around Marvel Stadium. They'll be making those decisions. But it's a weird feeling as you walk in here and you compare it to a game of football. Most of it's anticipation with a mm. little bit of sprinkle of nervousness. And I'm speaking on behalf of the majority of supporters that come to this ground to watch football that was a weird concoction, a mixture of seeing a handful of football clubs coming through. So there's a little bit of, well, we think we know what's going to happen. There's a lot of clubs already that, that have said it publicly, but even just touching base behind closed doors, we have to wait and see and play our hand off the back of what other clubs do before us. So there's so much still to play out. I probably feel outside of the top six picks, which we feel pretty comfortable. We know how it's going to fall. But then outside of that, there's still a lot of things that need to be answered tonight, Dwayne. I'm really looking forward to it. And you can send through a text as well, 0433 98 11 16, if you want to send through a text, 0433 98 11 16, during the course of the coverage, like Big Roo has sent through one hour till the Hornet lands at Arden Street. Uh, there is a, there's a huge amount of excitement around the Hornet because he's got exposed form against men in a really good competition. So a lot of the kids that we're going to see get drafted, we don't really have a lot of exposed form. Not a great back catalogue of their work for the last two years. But we know the Hornet can play. Nearly got his team into the grand final in the Sandfall. And uh, he's going to be there round one for North. And there's a lot of excitement around it. Well, a couple of things on that. First of all, I love it that a player yet to play a game of senior football already has a nickname and it's a ripper. So the Hornet will stick forever. And I love it. Hope he plays exactly like a Hornet attacks its, its prey. But the other thing about... Horn Francis is, he's played a lot of football over the last couple of years. So not only has he played some sandful football and mm. performed really well, you go back to that finals game where he was exceptional and probably fast-tracked himself or, or got his name written in text or opposed to pencil for being the, the number one draft pick. But he's also played a lot of football compared to the Victorians that have been really um, interrupted over the last two years. And, and no one has been more impacted, Duano, than this draft crop. You look at last year's 
uh, draft crop that got at least to play their bottom age as a 17-year-old, this has impacted the, their last two years of football. So I, I saw a couple of um, guys that might go in tonight's draft, Finn Callahan and Blake Howes, uh, last week. And, I, you know, you just have a simple conversation across private schools and rep footy and um, state football. It's like, how many games of footy have you played, you know, this year? I think it was five or seven. And mm. like, really? Like, you're in, you're in your prime of your junior career where you get to, you know, express yourself and be better than everybody else in your age bracket. Yet they've had so many limited opportunities. So I'm still excited to see what those guys could be. But you speak about a, a known product or a known entity in Horn Francis. Well, at least we have been able to see. The majority of the recruiters would have seen via video or via tape opposed to seeing him live because of the border closures. But at least the evidence is there. You know what he is capable of, opposed to a lot of other players that have played against um, players their own age, players that aren't probably at their ability both physically um, and probably mentally as well. But I think that just builds for this anticipation about how it all plays out ultimately throughout their career. Yeah, it's changed a bit. Um, you know, years and years ago, you'd play two games a weekend. You'd play <laughs> for your Year 12 team yep. on a Friday and then play for, well, in my case, Port Adelaide on the weekend. So you'd play two games a weekend. These guys... I've hardly played any footy. Talk me through the draft. You, when... Can I ask you, did you ever play, were you in the era where you played two games in the one day? Yeah, under did 10s, you... under 12s, or under 12s, under 14s, so you'd back up. I, nice. I, I quite often, and that's why I got to play, you know, a year out of my age group. My father thought that that was a good thing for me. Go up and get your backside kicked against some bigger guys might be a good idea. So, yeah, playing a, a few of those games is great. And I did that with Port Adelaide. I played senior footy as a 16-year-old. So, you know, going up and playing against men in the sample, in the seniors, and getting... Taught a lesson or two was a great lesson to learn. Nice. Talk me through the draft day, draft night that you got picked up. Uh, were you nervous? Did you know you were going to go um, pick 12, 13? Did you, did you know Luke Hodge, Chris Judd? Did you, did you know they were all superstars of the game? Or You know what's funny about it, Dwayne? And I've shared this story, and it comes up this time of year where people want to you know, share their stories, and you try and help or just give some, some basic insight for the journey. But it was so long ago in regards to the coverage or the lack of coverage that was going on. So we're going back, you know, 21 odd years now and I can still remember it all, but the bit that I can't remember is the attention attached to it. So I was an Essendon supporter growing up. So one of the things that I still remember is going to the draft camp. It was at the AIS in Canberra. The only team that didn't interview me was Essendon. So all of a sudden mm. you have these moments like, okay, I don't really know what that means, but there was no social media. I didn't appoint a manager prior to getting drafted like a lot of guys have probably had for the last 12 months where they're getting support. I grew up in Bendigo. There wasn't coverage on TV. There wasn't stations like SEN. The draft was broadcast. I wasn't invited. So it's this complete <laughs> different mix of really not knowing where you fit in the landscape. And to look back on it and say, was I going to get drafted? I probably thought I would. Now, they did do phantom drafts going back in the day, but not to the detail that they have these days where it almost gets updated weekly off the back of someone's performance. Yeah. I knew Chris Judd. I knew he played... So you would have played in the country team together I played because against, he was from I played, Warhol, I, played against yeah. Chris, I played against Chris Judd. He was, oh, sorry. He was Metro. Hodge, I, I played with Luke Hodge, yep. Gary Ablett Jr. and a handful of those players. But this is probably... And I don't mean this to sound like I was naive. This was just a reality of the situation because the names weren't so familiar. I knew Chris Judd lived near the water because he was from the Sandringham Dragons and I knew he'd had two shoulder reconstructions and had strapped shoulders. And that's about the depth of my knowledge of Chris Judd before I got drafted. Now, he was top age, I was bottom age, so we didn't cross over as much as juniors. But then you, you look back and you go, how could you not have known about this kid, <laughs> you know, going about his business at Caulfield Grammar? And, oh, you know, I'm still very close mates with Luke Ball, I stayed at Luke Ball's house when we made an Australian junior rep team, so I knew about Ballie, who would speak about these other people. He's Xavier College boy. I didn't even know what a private school was. I didn't even understand that there was possibilities <laughs> to get scholarships to play football at different schools. So, Were you the biggest thing in Bendigo at the time? No, not at all. And I went to Bendigo Senior. I went to a public school. I mean, we had a football program, but it's not like the football programs we hear about now. I mean, the majority of these kids getting drafted in the first round have been spoken about for years. It just wasn't the same. We had three boys drafted my year, Rick Ladson and Ash Watson, all in the first round, all out of the Bendigo Pioneers. And, and we had Daniel Elstone, I think, who went pick 20. So we had four in the top 20. But there was no buzz about it, Dwayne. I wasn't walking around like I was the quarterback of our school and getting a lot of love from both sexes. It wasn't that good. But um, it's just a sign of how things have really changed. 
Hey, well, we're about to dig deep into our coverage. The coverage actually starts, the actual draft doesn't start for another 45 odd minutes. Can I ask you about coaching before we move on to all can. things draft? How's it going? Has it been tough? How's it going? I'm absolutely loving it. I knew that I would always love to be involved in a football club again. Now, I have been at the Saints for the last five years with the Next Generation Academy group, so hopefully a few of those boys get an opportunity in the next uh, two to three nights, which is really exciting Mm. from a club perspective. Um, But doing more and having more involvement through the women's program has been everything that I thought it would be and probably a little bit more. How's your prep going? It's going really well. I mean, the season's been pushed back a month, so instead of starting on the 3rd of December, which does that make it next weekend, we've been pushed back to the other side of Christmas. And I think for our case, new head of football in Tessie McManus, I've come in as a new coach, handful of new players, new systems and new structures and new processes and all that sort of stuff. I think it's been a blessing in disguise that we've been given an additional month. Um, we just need to make the most of it. But mm. within that, like everything, Dwayne, there, there's challenges. You know, we, we have those challenges every day about where our group's at. And all I ever ask of our group is just a, a continual pursuit or relentlessness to improve. And our group's been exceptional in that. So the big story I've got to ask you, because everybody's course. waiting for me to ask you, you know I'm <laughs> going to ask you anyway. So yeah. tell me, Georgia Petrakis, uh, yeah. what happened there and what, how did it evolve and when did you find out she wasn't going to play and is it confirmed that she's not going to play for you? Uh, well, there's, there's a few questions in that. So the, the first bit is, from my perspective and my responsibilities, I support all of our players. We've got 30 on our list and we, we have train-ons, which are additional girls that train with us, um, not on a full-time basis, but, besu- but support our group along the way. So my responsibility is to educate, support, and then at the right time challenge the behaviours in the actions. And that doesn't matter whether you're Georgia Patrikios or you're a new girl that's just finished high school and we've got a couple of those that have only joined the group in the last couple of weeks. Um, so it's obviously a difficult situation and we can sit here and try and tiptoe around it. Is it disappointing that a superb player and a really good person at this stage isn't playing football at our club? Absolutely it is. Um, are we going to support her no matter what? Yeah, we will. And she put out the statement yesterday with the support of the football club. And we've supported Georgia and her family, um, a handful of her really close friends that play with her. And over the last couple of years, we are supporting all of them to the best of our ability. This is not me showing support. This is not Tess McManus showing support. This is our football club. And this involves um, the men's program. This involves, you know, the, uh, the top end of town in regards to the board. And they have been exceptional. And Georgia mentioned that last night in her press release. But we're clearly working through it, and maybe I'm a little bit naive, but I'm still optimistic that Georgia gets to play football with us this year. Through getting vaccinated or because the the, rules will change? The reality is she has to be. So, I mean, the reality is she hasn't been in our football club for the last four weeks, possibly five, whatever. I'm not quite sure on the particular date, but let's say it's a month because she's been unvaccinated, and, and that is the rules from... Australia, through Victoria, through the AFL, and then ultimately to the clubs. And that's a, a, a fact of the situation. And she isn't, as she stated last night. We're still going to support her. Well, we still want her to, to clearly be involved in our football club, both as the player but also as the person, because she is a superb person. She's young, and she also needs that sort of support as well. But she gets to make a choice. And at this stage, that's the choice that she's chosen, and we'll work through that. So do you speak to her yourself directly, over and over, or do you have people at the club that is that their responsibility to do that? Because I presume there will be constant contact. Um, have you changed your mind? But there's a point where you don't want to bugger about yeah. it and give her a privacy because, as you're saying, you'd like her to still get vaccinated and come and play. Absolutely. Now, now the risk is, and it can work both ways, we only ever show love. So the only reason you reach out to somebody is to support them, as I've mentioned, but you don't want to bombard somebody with the same questions because... We've got 29 other girls on our list that would go out of their way multiple times a day to support her and to check in with her and see how she's going. Never probably pressuring her. Like, that wouldn't have been the intent of anybody at our club, but to give the facts from, um, or, or at least the options. So I have reached out to her multiple times, which she's always responded. She's always been superb. But we've also got people, as I mentioned, in positions of power in our football club to support her in a more diligent and consistent way. So a couple of adjectives before we move on. Are you surprised, disappointed, um, um, hurt? I reckon I've had every emotion. I reckon I've had every emotion of how you feel about someone not being a part of our group. And once again, this is the footballer, and it's been clearly stated how good she is at football. I mean, she is a superb footballer. And what I've already seen with my short time in regards to the women's program, and let's say it's a couple of months before 
she didn't uh, hadn't been back at the football club. She's a superb trainer. She goes about it really well. She fits into our group beautifully. We have a, a large amount of young players at our football club that have a huge influence on the training standards and the culture of our footy club. So to remove one player like that, we also had a severe injury on the weekend. Another young girl who's a star as well did a ACL on Saturday morning. So then we start to put a couple of things together and there's no doubt it makes things difficult. Does that mean it's the end of the world? Absolutely not. But we've got some challenges and that's just a, a fact of the situation. Great to have Nick Dowsado with us, and we're here live at Marble Stadium for Tyre Power. Tyre Power, the number one draft pick for tyre safety and protecting you on the road. Make sure you drop into your local tyre power outlet. We're going to take a break, come back, a few of your calls, and we're going to talk draft. We're not far away from North Melbourne, maybe reading out Jason Horn Francis as the number one pick. Great to have you, company. Off the bench with Hutchie and Pickers for Maccas and Tire Power. Whenever you've got spare change yes. from the purchase, you put them in the jar for the kids. I do. When they're here, I just give them some money to spend so I don't have to go and raid my bank account. How much was in there? $550. And did you go all to Mia? No. Well, how did you divvy it? I gave them 250 each. Yeah, so what's the, what's the third bit? Oh, it was a $70 administration fee. <laughs> <laughs> Off the bench, Saturday morning on SEN. The SEN Track Podcast. Catch up on all your favourite shows or any interviews you might have missed by subscribing to SEN Track on your favourite podcast provider today. Taking a road trip is the winner this month. Tyre Power, big holiday sale on now. Falcon Passenger Tyres, buy three, get one free. Greyhound Racing's Greatest Race, the Group 1 Melbourne Cup, this Friday at Sandown. Kia Sportage medium SUV has been unleashed. Know the beauty of having a wild one with an all-new turbocharged engine. Bred to be fearless with a strikingly sculpted exterior, soft touch leather interior and a kingdom worth of Kia boot space. Unleash the beast. Explore the beauty with the redesigned Kia Sportage. For more info, visit kia.com.au. Kia, movement that inspires. At ENS, we're proud to stock Westinghouse ovens, cooktops, fridges and dishwashers and have done so for over 50 years. Built in Adelaide, Westinghouse ovens in stunning black stainless steel come with unbelievable features like air fry, steam assisted cooking and pyro clean self-cleaning. ENS has a massive range of Westinghouse appliances and our staff are Westinghouse experts. And we won't be beaten on price. So visit one of our nine showrooms today or shop online and get the ENS feeling with Westinghouse. I was so lucky to enjoy the truly fantastic trip to Mildura this year. And I have to say, if you're planning a weekend away or a couple of weeks break, you simply must start your journey in Mildura. Campbell Brown here. Jet boating, water skiing and great fun on the golf course. There's so much to do in Mildura for everyone. Experience Australia's food bowl. Taste the wines, the local beers and oh, the gin distillery. Planning an action-packed weekend with the family and friends? Visit Mildura. I did and I absolutely loved it. Real Adventures with Patrick Dangerfield and Aaron Hapgood. Everything fishing, boating and outdoors. My mother works at the Dally Inn supermarket and it's the most bought fish from the supermarket. Leather jacket. They sell the most leather jacket out of all species of fish. It's like when you go to a restaurant and you see Gurnard on the menu. Paul Worsing and then like, was literally oh, catching Gurnard and going, this is my favourite fish. And then you eat it. It's a beautiful eating fish. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Patrick Dangerfield and Aaron Hapgood. Subscribe and listen today wherever you get your podcasts. Tab Queen's Land Summer Racing Carnival has finally arrived. With more than 20 million in prize money and bonuses, Australia's most exciting summer racing carnival continues at the Gold Coast with the Tattersalls Race Day this Saturday. Don't miss a single minute of the on-course action, including the recognition stakes. Visit queenslandsummercarnival.com.au for more. Gamble responsibly. If gambling becomes an issue, call 1-800-858-858. Being at the greatest events on the sporting calendar is what makes sport fans tick. And to witness the biggest sporting moments in Australia, Ballpark Entertainment can get you there. AFL, NRL, horse racing, soccer, basketball, cricket, boutique events and more. Ticketing, corporate suites and money can't buy experiences get the best access to the best sporting events with Ballpark Entertainment. Making memories. Ballparkentertainment.com.au 
You're listening to SEN's coverage of the 2021 NAB AFL Draft. For tyre power, draft three tyres, get your fourth tyre free on Falcon Passenger Tyres. We're live from Marvel Stadium. Brad Scott, not far away from joining us, the man who is in that seat, the hot seat, the old Steve Hocking chair. He's going to join us, so looking forward to having a chat to Brad Scott. Had a chat to Jared Whiteley. He did earlier today. Said a few things about head high bumps and head high contact. So looking forward to being able to advance on that. But uh, Mark Will has been good enough to join us. Sandring and Dragons Talent Operations Manager. A few players from the Dragons will go well tonight and especially tomorrow. But a couple high up tonight. Mark, welcome to the program. Great to have you on. I appreciate having me. Thank you very much. Are you expecting Finn Callahan to be the guy that the Giants go for straight up, or do you expect the Giants might bid for Sam Darcy and Nick Dacos first? Yeah, like you take the best player in the draft, so it depends on what they do, and I think the GWS have probably shown that they were looking for a Ruckman, so I think Sam Darcy's name might be read out, and then I'm uh, pretty hopeful when his name will come next. We was, we we're so excited sitting here and we've just had a brief chat about the anticipation. But before we get to tonight, I think it's important to understand the journey, particularly of this draft crop and how difficult it's been. So from a Sandringham Dragons perspective, and you have some unique um, challenges as well because a lot of your boys or your talented boys will be playing as private school football, which is their priority. But this year probably compounded as much as ever with just a lack of football. How have you supported the guys and just a couple of those challenges that you've seen over the last 12 or so months? Yeah, that's a great question. I think the first part of that was no matter what we put in place, if the players didn't buy into it, you know, it was never ever going to happen. So we had a really good, strong leadership group that we sat down with and said that they needed to take ownership of it. And I think those boys did, and they grabbed hold of it pretty well straight away. And we did things like everyone else was doing. We had some cooking challenges over Zoom, and, you know, we had some... Closed ones for the players only and some with the staff in there as well. But, you know, we did, the biggest thing for us was connection um, and how we stay, keep them connected, how we keep them positive. I think the, one of the positive things we've got in the NAB League at the moment is we've all got a, a talent welfare officer and um, that person was really important for us this year. But you know, going back to it was probably the connection bit. And when they did come back out to play and train, it was to make it fun. So I think... Well, all the barriers were taken down and all the expectations were taken down and we just enjoyed, you know, being in each other's company. And when we got out there to train, we, we just had fun out there. Because you couldn't train as much as you would have liked to and clearly played as many games as you, as you would have liked to, Wills, were you finding other ways to educate the players in regards to styles of football, the fundamentals? Did you set them challenges or just other ways to make sure their game wasn't falling behind given the limitations this year? Yeah, definitely. That's another great question. We had, you know, players track game players, so they had to choose a player that they were trying to emulate their game plan on, and yeah, their game style on, and who which player they looked up to. So they all had one, two, or three players that they basically stay connected with and watched. You know, within we were lucky we were still getting AFL football played, so um, they were watching a lot of vision there. They were talking with their line coaches and what they saw in the game and how they they could possibly do that when we got back to playing football. Um, the other thing, the other thing is we definitely connected by, you know, once a week with our coaches, you know, going through our own style of play, reinforcing what we did. We went back and watched the game of footy and got the players to actually, you know, self-analyze that game. So we didn't do it all. As a coaching group, we learned a bit from that ourselves, you know, probably listening to the players on what they learned from that game. And probably the big scary one, we actually mic'd up the box one time um, <laughs> and listened to what the coaches were saying and we actually played that back to the players. So that was an interesting uh, Zoom session, but, you know, it was good for our coaches. It's all about learning for all of us. Are you able to share any of the insights from the coaches' boxes or most of it, those words wouldn't have been in the dictionary? Um, yeah, well, no, they were pretty good. There was once or twice there was the uh, automatic dump button that was there, <laughs> so we dumped it a couple of times. But uh, it was probably different to see what we saw in the... What we were seeing up in the box to what was actually happening out in the ground and when you watch that vision, you know, maybe the panic stations weren't actually quite there. So that was good for our coaches to learn from that and, you know, and had their players themselves and what we were trying to teach them. So I think, you know, from it all, we all always look for the positive of what's happened, you know, and through a unique circumstance yeah. and we took some positives from everything we could do. Nice. I'm sure your phone's been running hot from list managers and people involved in all 18 football clubs can you just give us a bit of an overview, I guess, of, of the questions that you're getting posed about some of the players that are at the Dragons? What do they really want to know, recruiters? 
Oh, they're just the first thing they want to know are they good people. And you know, it's our number one mantra that you leave our football club a better person than you come into it. So it's a pretty easy one to talk about. But that's the first thing they want to know: are they coachable? You know, do they understand the game plan? We bark test all our players, so we go to that little bit extra and try to t- find out what type of learning style they've got. So we pass on that information. We t- we pass on all the information that we can gather from the boys. You know, do how well they react inside a group. Are they a bit of an introvert or an extrovert? Um, some of the boys are both, and, and some he put in different situations. Can they handle pressure? Um, you know, we don't talk a lot about vision because they've got all that vision, so we let that go themselves. Um, but we talk about, you know, what we're trying to do, and we we'll talk about our game plan and our game style and what we're trying to teach them on that day. So there's a, there is a fair bit of dialogue that's shared between myself and the coach and the coach definitely was the one who'd do all that side and I definitely would talk about the other side and you know just even right down to their parents and and what they've done and and a lot of our stories this year about their pathway so I think it's really important to you know talk about where they come from as a junior to a senior if they've got some senior footy so we we make sure we relay that information across as well. We often hear of this time of year the funny stories that recruiters or coaches may pose to the players about to get drafted themselves, some really unusual ones. I recall one from a couple of years ago. I think this might have been taken off the table, Duane, but it was if you were a fruit, what fruit would you be and why? They're trying to pose these unusual questions to 17- and 18-year-old boys, trying to get a reaction or try and get a read on them. Do you get questions similar to that? And I'm not assuming that the fruit one, but just an unusual question that that makes you you think about the way that you answer, you know, representing one of your boys from Sandy? Oh, you definitely. I think uh, Essendon are pretty good at that. They try to trip you up and they ask the same question four times to see if you give the same answer. So we don't, they don't go with that far. They probably just look at the honesty factor with us. And, you know, we've been in the game for a little bit and we just say it's our reputation too. So we're always honest in what we say. But yeah, our questions are probably pretty straight down the line where they know we've got nothing to hide with it and, you know, they just want to know, uh, are they getting a really good player that plays 50, 100, 200? And, um, hopefully they all could play 200, but that doesn't happen. But they also don't want to be taking someone that is potentially a headline for them. Mark, congratulations on what you've done so far to get these kids ready in difficult times. And uh, we look forward to seeing a few of you guys pick tonight and tomorrow night. And all their hard work uh, will result in something tangible. Great to have you on the program. We appreciate it. I appreciate giving me some time. And thanks again for your support. Mark Stuff Wheeler, was. Sandringham Dragons Talent Operations Manager. Brad Scott's going to join us, General Manager of Football at the AFL. is going to join us. We're going to take a quick break. Before the break, though, so, Nick, if you were a fruit, <laughs> what would it be and um, why? I, I have no idea right. would have been my honest answer, particularly if I was seven. I'm going to say a mango because I had one last night and it was delicious. Oh, so you are delicious. I think so. I've got no other answer for you. I'm sorry, Dwayne. No, you put me on the spot. Yeah, well, that's what they do with the kids. I'd probably be a prickly pear. We'll take a break. <laughs> Great to have you come here live from Marvel Stadium. The Captain's Run with Kane Corns. Chris Davies is the GM of football. The reality of Pete's situation is that you know, we don't think we can provide him right now the spot that he wants to specifically play in. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't think that Pete is a really good player. It's more about you know, what we think both parties need right now. The Captain's Run with Kane Corns. Friday mornings on SEN. The all-new SEN app. Download it today and never miss a moment of your favourite show. Streaming live anywhere, anytime. Celebrating being able to drive to see family and friends. Tyre Power's big holiday sale now on. Buy three, get one free on Falcon passenger tyres. Miss your favourite show? Want to catch up on an interview? Download and listen to every SEN podcast when you want it. Or on the SEN app. Introducing the all-new Staria Load, Hyundai's new commercial van loaded with as much space and tech as you can possibly fit. We fit in class-leading safety features like a 360-degree surround-view monitor in the liftback, giving you another set of eyes on the road. Plus, the two-seat van fits three Euro pallets. Right now, we've also fit in a special $750 bonus for ABN holders. The all-new Hyundai Staria Load fits in everything. T's and C's apply. Every day, we wake up and look at ourselves in the mirror. How do you see yourself? 
PTPCU as confident, standing tall. PTP's new posture range makes the perfect posture accessible to anyone. Designed by world-leading professional practitioners, the range features posture reminding T-shirts, braces and belts, a core seat and V backpack, all working to straighten your thoughts around posture. PTP, smarter movement, better performance. Find the posture range online at rebelsport.com and ptpfit.com. G'day landscape gurus. Want something to make you look even better than you already do? Install Rainbird's R-Van Rotary Sprinkler Nozzles. They're designed to improve water efficiency, throwing the right amount of water effectively and getting the best results from your lawns. You can have a green lawn in no time. Don't believe me? Just look at the MCG's outfield. Smooth and pristine green. They installed Rainbird. So install Rainbird's R-Van Rotary Sprinkler Nozzles. Rainbird, the intelligent use of water. Learn more at rainbird.com. I was so lucky to enjoy a truly fantastic trip to Mildura this year and can I just say, if you're planning a holiday, whether it's a weekend away or a couple of weeks, start your journey in Mildura. Malcolm Blight here, with not one but five golf courses in the Mildura region, I feel like I'm in heaven. There's so much to see and do in Mildura. Hire a houseboat, take in a breathtaking Murray River sunrise, the magical star show at night and all the exploring in between. Visit Mildura, I did and I absolutely loved it. Victorian harness racing just got bigger with all the exciting action on Trot's Vision. It's an enhanced online platform with every Victorian harness race streamed live. Enjoy exclusive content, the daily form, tips from Australia's most respected racing analysts and more. Trot's Vision brings you all the live action every day at home or on your phone. And best of all, it's free. Lap up Trot's Vision. Lap up the trots. Visit thetrots.com.au. For over 40 years, Kubota's range of agricultural, construction, mowing and implement machinery has helped to shape and build Australia. Kubota's new and improved models continue to deliver outstanding quality, performance, reliability and value. Always ready to get the job done. Visit kubota.com.au to view the latest online catalogue or contact your local Kubota dealer for your copy today. Kubota. Shaping Australia. You're listening to SEN's coverage of the 2021 NAB AFL Draft. For tyre power, draft three tyres, get your fourth tyre free on Falcon Passenger Tyres. We're live from Marble Stadium, still around half an hour from the number one pick in the 2021 AFL Draft being named by North Melbourne and the first round completed tonight before the final few rounds are done tomorrow. Great to have your company. Nick Dalsato is with me and Brad Scott's been good enough to join us, the general manager of football at the AFL. He has just walked into our studio here at Marble Stadium. Had a lot to say in the last 24 hours. If you didn't hear it, uh, the AFL want some free-flowing footy, uh, try and move the ball on quickly. Quarter lengths are staying the same, which is great. The stand rule is sticking around. Uh, so much to get to, so little time with you, Brad. So just firstly, welcome. Great to have you on. It's uh, really great for us to be able to, to have a chat to you. Yeah, thanks, Dwayne. Thanks, Dal. Good to be here. Really enjoyed what you've had to say so far about what you think should be the direction of the game. I want to take you a little deeper than you went today because... I understand if you arrive at a contest late and you make head-high contact and you elect to bump or you even make the choice and you get there late, then you, the onus is on you um, to either pull out of the contact or you're going to be fined or suspended. I mean, that's the bottom line, the way it stands. I'm curious about the arriving at the same time because that's going to be a contentious one. If two people arrive at the same time, I know that we probably think that it could be head-to-head contact sometimes and both arrive at the same time, but what if someone pulls their head away at the last minute and his shoulder makes contact with the other guy. How, how hard, how brutal are you going to be on those guys arriving at the same time? Well, I think that the thing we've always got to remember is that our game is a contested contact sport. So that there's always going to be the potential for accidents to happen. And, um, but it's the shift in attitudes over time that I, that I think everyone's starting to get their head around. And you know, it used to be that as long as you had your eyes on the ball and you were contesting the ball and impact was irrelevant and it was treated as an accident very quickly we're getting to the stage where you know i think the the obvious one is the david mckay one from last year where there was pretty much simultaneous contact with two players contesting the ball now fortunately you know we there haven't been too many of those examples where you can find that simultaneous contact Mm. usually a player is late and so what we're basically saying and far be it from us to tell 
the coaches how to coach it. But you can contest the ball, but if you're late and you choose to bump, you're going to be in trouble. And I think then it's up to the coaches to coach it the way they see fit. And simultaneous, what if one guy decides to protect himself and by doing so, uh, his body, shoulder, whatever, contacts the other guy's head? Well, I think there is, there's always going to be accidents in the game. What we're doing, or we're trying to do, is, is mitigate those accidents mm. as best we can. You, you, you went through a handful of things there, Dwayne, that, that Brad's spoken about. Do you, do you have an optimum vision of what the game looks like? And we speak about speed and we're bringing in rule changes. Do you know, or does your team know what the game ultimately you want it to look like and you're finding ways to get there as quick as possible? Is that the process that you go through on a daily basis? Not really, Dal. No, we, we, we think the game tends to evolve pretty naturally and in an ideal world, we don't do anything. You know, the game just continues to evolve and coaches coach the way they coach and they, they coach to win, obviously. Um, but, and I think we see this pattern emerge in most years where most teams are trying to be pretty offensive early in the year and, and trying to open up and trying to attack. The problem with that is if they do that really well, there's another team who's getting scored against a lot. So that elicits a response from the other coach and usually it's let's bottle the game up and 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 try and defend a little bit better. So, you know, ideally we just let the game evolve, but there are times where you need to intervene. I think a, a perfect example of that is the 6-6-6 rule at centre bounces because... We saw it in the grand final where one team gets a, a run on. As a coach, it's pretty easy to, to stop that from centre bounces previously. You know, I suspect the Bulldogs would have put numbers behind the ball and, and stopped that run in its tracks. The 6-6-6 rule was something that took that power away from coaches and, you know, personally, I think the game's better for it. One of the rules that I loved last year and the last couple of years and now going through the majority of the competitions is the stand rule. I, I was a huge fan of that. I felt particularly in the first month of football, Maybe, as you mentioned, with teams being more aggressive and proactive with their ball movement until we start to retreat naturally as a competition. What has been your assessment of that? And then what do you feel like the, the general reaction has been to a couple of those rule changes, but that one in particular? Well, it probably depends on your point of view. And, you know, from uh, uh, some clubs probably like it more than others based on the way they play, that's for sure. But what we're really keen to do is give the, the ball carrier more options. And when you take a mark, we get a free kick. You know, we want you to be able to see, you know, pretty much 180 degrees of the ground and, and certainly looking to go forward. But, you know, and Dale, you know as well as anyone that most teams play a, a team-style defence and the first layer of defence is the man on the mark. And over a 15-year period, defence has generally been winning over, over offence on balance. So by taking away that first layer of defence somewhat, it gives the ball carrier more options. Now, we're not going to unequivocally say that the stand rule has caused X or Y, but what we are saying is that it does give the ball carrier more options and it gives coaches more options. We want a bigger sample size before we form a firm view on you know, whether we tweak it again. One of the other grey area ones that caused head high contact was the arm pin tackle. You had a look at a few of those yesterday. So the one arm pinned player has the ball in the other hand. He could brace his fall, but he elects to maintain possession of the ball. Is there an onus on the guy who is tackled to let go of the ball and brace himself, or is the onus going to be more on the tackler in future? Well, it probably falls on the tackler. Um, you know, again, we want, it's, it's, whether it's a, a tackle or a contested ball situation, we want to coach players to protect themselves at all times. But the onus is on the tackler to make sure that you know, the tackle's legal and it's not dangerous. And again, it's an incredibly difficult area because, you know, players are, are often going at top speed and their momentum might go forward. But we've been clear in the past on, and we know this, Dale, as, you know, coached player, that you can tackle, you can tackle to take to ground, but you can't sling players to ground and there can't be a double action. Wait, so wait, to tackle and pin an arm at your peril now if you take the guy to ground? Yeah, the, um, um, look... And again, probably looking at Dal here, because the way we certainly coached it, the idea of pinning the arm was so the player couldn't dispose of the yeah. ball. Um, that was probably taken to the next level, pin the arm and take them to ground. Now, that's, that's clearly dangerous, and we've seen plenty of examples of that. And I think, again, it's just the clarity for coaches and, and players that what's acceptable and what's not. And just looking at some vision on your screen now, yeah. there are some examples of things that are clearly not acceptable now. So how are you going to explain it to the fans? Because the fans, once you explain that to the fans, you've explained it to me, the game's evolved, 
and this is something that was okay 10 years ago, but it's not going to be okay in 2022. So is there an opportunity for you to uh, get a video out to all the fans or can it become clearer for the fans? Yeah, and that's, that's the great challenge to make what is so, uh, an area that is somewhat ambiguous as clear as we possibly can. That's a big challenge and, and one where we're pretty keen to take on. We speak about the flow of the game. So I guess what we're in, in layman's terms, more ball movement, faster, um, up and down without going too far where it turns into um, pre-season style where it's just a running race. How do you balance out that ability to make the game more free-flowing in its most simplistic form but also still having that combative style as the game demands? <laughs> I think it's a challenge. We get a lot of feedback around uh, free-flowing footy and what it actually is. Mm. And one of the things we looked at, Dal, and, and I think, you know, is that transition football. So the amount of time the ball transitions from defensive 50 in an unbroken chain to forward 50, that has been on the steady decline for 15 years. Every year it's gone down, except last year when, when it ticked back up for the first time. So, but on the flip side, and that's what we sort of define as free-flowing footy. But on the flip side, the, the fans say, we want free-flowing footy with a lot of one-on-one contests. Now, one-on-one contest sort of defeats the purpose of unbroken chains and free-flowing footy. So sometimes what we want is in direct contradiction to each other. So, yeah, we, we, I think our, our view's got to be to allow the coaches to coach, allow the players to play, um, get a decent sample size before we look at making any more significant change. Do you think we'll ever get back to one-on-one defender versus forward or will we always have zones from here on? Well, you'd have, probably have to ask the coaches. You were one and you knew how to manipulate it <laughs> just as well as any current coach. Yeah, well, I mean, and, and that's, that's... Would you the, like one-on-one, more one-on-ones? Yeah, and, I think I think all, all fans would. Um, defensive coaches don't want one-on-ones ever. Mm. I mean, that's that's... That's a KPI in most um, defensive coaches' kit bag. Um, you know, we don't want one-on-one contests. So, again, I come back to coaching tactics are, the, are going to be the number one factor in, in terms of how the game's played. But we can't ask coaches to um, play a certain way because their job is to win. So, therefore, that responsibility falls on the AFL. You are a senior coach for 10 years. We've got 18 clubs and 18 senior coaches at Marvel Stadium right now about to make a significant investment into their football club with some young players coming in. Take us into the feel and the mindset of all of those senior coaches with what's about to happen in the next few hours. Well, yeah, it's How always... Much, actually, I'll go one before that. How much involvement did you have as the senior coach opposed to just entrusting everybody that's done this? Uh, my, my major role was to support the recruiters and make sure they were um, mentally, <laughs> mentally okay <laughs> yeah, because doing it this, right. is, this is their grand final. I mean, they've... They've put, it's not just 12 months' work. This is often three to five years' worth of work. They've been following these players for a really long time and, you know, they get to this point where hopefully they call the, the name of the player that they want. But, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a massive day for the players, a huge day, and it can be club-defining. Um, you know, we, it's a great thing in this game that we go back and look at, you know, drafts and we compare drafts and every club will walk, walk away tonight winners because everyone will be wrapped with who they've picked and we won't know for five years whether they got it right or not. Great to have you in, Brad. Uh, it is nice to be able to have a chat to you about these things and it's fantastic that you're so accessible. Uh, I talked to Gerard Whateley earlier today. You're on 3RW tonight. You're with us tonight. So it is going to be great if, uh, you know, we can explain this to the fans in layman's terms. You can put the videos out as much as you like. But I, I like what you said about you and Michael Christian being on the same page more because if we're all on the same page more, the fans, the coaches, the players, and the players are sometimes hard to get through to as well to get them to change the way they go about it. But if you could get them to change the way they go about their tackling early in the season without having to throw a big suspension at someone, that would be nice if your education over summer did that for you. Yeah, and that's our goal. I mean, we, we don't want any suspensions. We want all the players playing every week. Um, you know, and the umpires will pay free kicks where, where necessary, and, and we're really hopeful that... You know, suspensions aren't needed because players do adapt pretty quickly. So our role from now to, to round one in the men's season is to make sure players are as clear as they can possibly be and coaches can coach them the right way so they don't get themselves into these situations. Would the AFL Players Association ever, ever allow the upping of fines or do you think there's never a level of fine that would hurt a player like a one-week suspension? 
Again, it depends who you ask. I mean, it, if you ask the players, fines are a big deterrent, and particularly the Players Association, they, they don't like fines at all, whereas the clubs see fines as the player essentially being cleared. So whether it's a big enough deterrent or not depends who you ask. Yeah, well, the fans, as Wayne, you mentioned you today... You know what most players are like as well? Short arms, deep pockets. Yeah. They don't want to pay a cent. I reckon right? if the Players Association said you can now fine players up to 10 grand or a percentage of your match fee, I think that... They might change their behaviour. But, mm. hey, suspension's got to change it too. So look out. If you don't know what you're supposed to be doing round one, you might be ineligible for the brown low starting round two. Great to have you, Brad. Really appreciate your Good time. Good to see you. Thanks, Dwayne. Brad Thanks, Scott Cal. joining us, General Manager of Football at the AFL and uh, bringing some clarity to it all. Some clarity, some big grey areas of the game, but I think we're going to have the opportunity to get them clarified quite a few times this year. We'll take a break. We're live at Marble Stadium for the draft. Waitley. Weekdays on SEN. I'm Jared Waitley. Brad Scott outlined the future consequences for head high contact in the AFL. I think everyone knows the direction that this is going in that we want to make our game as safe as possible. If you choose to bump, you can't bump someone in the head. And if you do, whether it's accidental or not, there's going to be a case to enter. Join me tomorrow. Waitley. Weekdays on SEN. Trackside, your daily fix on all things racing. All the results, all the news, all the form. Live daily on SEM Track. Celebrating being able to drive further than 15 kilometres. Tyre Power's big holiday sale now on. Fork and passenger tyres, buy three, get one free. Greyhound Racing's greatest race, the Group 1 Melbourne Cup. This Friday at Sandown. Victorian Harness Racing just got bigger with all the exciting action on Trot's Vision. It's an enhanced online platform with every Victorian Harness race streamed live. Enjoy exclusive content, the daily form, tips from Australia's most respected racing analysts and more. Trot's Vision brings you all the live action every day at home or on your phone. And best of all, it's free. Lap up Trot's Vision. Lap up the Trots. Visit thetrots.com.au. Hi, it's Andrew Bensley here. The John Allen Better Home Living Spring Sale is on again. That means there's massive reductions on hundreds of items like TVs, air conditioners, fridges, washers, cooking appliances, beds and even barbecues. Plus there's free delivery and a hot tip they guarantee to beat any online price on stocked items across the store. Don't miss the John Allen Better Home Living Spring Sale. See the specials at johnallen.com.au Your local Hyundai showroom is back open and they've got the remarkable i30 in stock right now. Imagine driving the latest i30 with remarkable space, comfort and convenience from just 25 490 drive away. Or you could upgrade to the i30 Active, featuring leather-appointed seats and automatic transmission from just 29 490 drive away. Why wait? Spring into your local Hyundai dealer before it's gone. T's and C's apply. Speak to your dealer for details. With destinations like the Great Ocean Road, your best adventures are right here in Victoria. Switch your electricity and gas to Red Energy on a Qantas Red Saver plan today and you'll get 15,000 bonus Qantas points plus two points per dollar on every energy bill you pay on time. Switch on to Red Energy now on 131 806 so you can switch off on a Victorian holiday later. Residential customers only. Eligibility criteria and conditions apply. Energy fact sheets available at redenergy.com.au slash EFS. Real Adventures with Patrick Dangerfield and Aaron Hapgood. Everything fishing, boating and outdoors. My mother works at the Dally Inn supermarket and it's the most bought fish from the supermarket. Leather jacket. They sell the most leather jacket out of all species of fish. It's like when you go to a restaurant and you see Gurnard on the menu. Paul Worsing and then like, was literally oh, catching Gurnard and going, this is my favourite fish. And then you eat it. It's a beautiful eating fish. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Patrick Dangerfield and Aaron Hapgood. Subscribe and listen today wherever you get your podcasts. Every day we wake up and look at ourselves in the mirror. How do you see yourself? PTP see you as confident, standing tall. PTP's new posture range makes the perfect posture accessible to anyone. Designed by world-leading professional practitioners, the range features posture reminding T-shirts, braces and belts, a core seat and V backpack, all working to straighten your thoughts around posture. PTP, smarter movement, better performance. Find the posture range online at rebelsport.com and ptpfit.com. 
You're listening to SEN's coverage of the 2021 NAB AFL Draft. For tyre power, draft three tyres, get your fourth tyre free on Falcon Passenger Tyres. Always great to have your company listening to the program. We're live from Marble Stadium, and I wish the ad break went to air. Nick Dalsetto <laughs> talking to his old coach, Brad Scott. How long did he coach you for? Three years. He was superb. I loved him as a coach. You still get on pretty well by the looks yeah, of things. Yeah, oh, 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 we did. We got along really well as a you know a player-coach relationship as well. And now the benefit was I was a little bit older, and I came with a different upbringing, and Brad was fantastic. The door was always open. I, you know, I'd walk in and say, have you got a minute? He goes, I've got as long as you need. And we ultimately just ended up talking about football. You know, obviously a lot of it related about winning games for our yeah. football club at the time. But he's um, he's got a great wealth of knowledge, hence why he's able to, to be in the role that he is now. And uh, we, we haven't asked him about it. And this I don't even know if this is an area for him to, to probably touch on. But even when he was the coach at North Melbourne, he was on a committee for what was the betterment of the game. And at the time, I don't think all of the things that he was suggesting was beneficial to North Melbourne in regards to some of the rule changes, the way that we played the played our football. And we sort of touched on that in regards to the, the stand rule and, and manning the mark. But, um, you know, I, I think he has a good overview of what the game currently is and what it could possibly be for the spectators. Uh, one here on the text, by the way, 0433981116, if you'd like to send through a text. Uh, we had no word about pre-season. Brad Scott did address with, with um, Jared Whateley earlier today about the fixture. The fixture is not his portfolio, so uh, the fixture itself will be out in the first week of December, so he wasn't able to answer whether there's going to be a week off, a bye week between the end of the home and away series and the final series starting, all that kind of stuff, because uh, that's more Travis Old's department. But uh, the rules are certainly Brad Scott's department. Are you happy with the direction they're taking with the game this year? Yeah, then? It's, it's an interesting one, and Brad mentioned it multiple times, and he was clearly in this position for 10 odd years that we have all these rule changes that we want the game to flow a certain way or to look a certain way and to be better for, for ultimately, you know, the fans to enjoy what they're watching the majority of the time. Yet coaches have this ability to manipulate it at all times to make the game look different to what its initial um, version could have been. But um, I think it's ever-evolving. And, we, I mean, we have chuckles about this quite often, Dwayne, that we don't want any rule changes, but things need to change. <laughs> so how do we get there, Dwayne, if we don't want anything to be tweaked along the way? I like where we're currently at, but I'm a lover of football anyway. So I feel like the majority of times I'll walk away from, what do we cover, 60, 70 games mm-hmm. of football a year, mostly live, that we walk away from those games and I've had a pretty good day. Yeah, I enjoy football. I like what it is. And if they you know, get rid of the stuff, I've said this before, if they get rid of the stand rule and we don't have it, I'll still love footy. Of course. If they keep the stand rule, I'll still love footy. Um, he's going to cop some bullets, though, isn't he, Brad? Steve Hocking um, was wounded a few times, maybe, although he looked as if he wasn't bleeding too much. He, he was pretty solid. Mm, I think you know what you're signing up for. And, and the reason that you do get some of this backlash and these bullets, as you mentioned, Dwayne, is it's a passionate game. And we all see the game differently. We see a particular incident completely different. Somebody thinks it's a free kick. Others think that it's play on or it might be even a free kick to the other player. But I think that's what is actually makes our game fantastic, Wayne. But no doubt, Brad's a big boy. He's been around the block a couple of times. He knows what's coming his way. So we're not far away from the 2021 AFL draft starting. We're only a few minutes away. We're going to take a break shortly. But it does look as if North Melbourne will get Jason Horn Francis with pick one in the draft. And just to run you through the draft order again, because when we come back, it will be on. Giants have picked two. Gold Coast three. Adelaide four. Hawthorne five. Fremantle six. Richmond 7, Fremantle 8, St Kilda 9, West Coast 10, Essendon 11, Port Adelaide 12, Giants 13, Brisbane 14, Richmond 15, Sydney 16, Melbourne 17 and Brisbane 18. If we do get a couple of bids for Father Sons, which we will get with Nick Dacos um, and uh, Sam Darcy, yes, we will get those. Then the draft will go longer than the 18 picks. It'll end up being about 20 picks, and it probably will go a couple of hours worth. So uh, it is going to be quite a long draft. But for North Melbourne fans, they've been excited for months about Horn Francis, which has been great. I think they've been excited that they get a fantastic option, you know, and whatever way they go about it, Dwayne, you know, they had the two offers uh, to trade it out. So all of a sudden, you know, all you want in life is options, and they've got a lot (laughs) coming at them. Who knows? They might even be getting some quiet offers right now behind closed doors that we will Mm. maybe never be privy to, Dwayne, but... They've never had a first, a number one draft pick, the Kangaroos, and 
you can't see it going anywhere else. And we touched on Horn Francis's year, but also his last few years and what we've seen from him. It's extremely exciting to add him to what they've currently got with that young group coming through. And we could get some live bidding for picks tonight. Isn't that, that's so, exciting, isn't it? Yeah, so if a team, you know, they might have, Essendon might have, well, they do have pick 11, but if there's someone available they didn't think would be available at nine, then they can try and move up the draft order and grab that nine, pick nine from St Kilda, and jump into the draft at that point. But what I can promise you is whatever picks particularly come somewhere in the teens or if it goes out to 20, which we think it will be, every club will say they cannot believe that young man was still left on the board when they had that pick. <laughs> yeah, we will hear a couple of cliches tonight. And by the way, we will be interviewing quite a few of those that are picked and those that are doing the picking. So make sure you stick around. We're live at Marvel Stadium for the 2021 AFL Draft. We're with you for the next couple of hours. Nick D'Alessandro and I, we're here for tyre power. Tire Power, the number one draft pick for tire safety and protecting you on the road. Great to have Tire Power on board. But stick around the 2021 AFL Draft, the live coverage, and we'll bring you the picks as they go with Gil McLaughlin live, thanks to the coverage from Fox Footy. So great to have your company on SEN. Summer Breakfast. Today we spoke to draft guru Cal Toomey and we also caught up with Renegades skipper Sophie Molyneux ahead of their WBBL finals campaign. Kingy? If you missed any of the show, catch up on the podcast page at sen.com.au. Join us on Thursday for Summer Breakfast. Weekdays on SEN. On the SEN app, check out the SENW channel with stars of women's sport at home and abroad. Daisy Pierce. Stephanie Brands. Plus, on the SCNW channel, we cover AFLW, Rugby League, W League, Netball, Cricket, and track the female stars of horse racing and more. For the latest news, interviews, and catch-up podcasts with the biggest names in women's sport, jump on the SCNW channel. Download the SEN app now. Victorian harness racing just got bigger with all the exciting action on Trot's Vision. It's an enhanced online platform with every Victorian harness race streamed live. Enjoy exclusive content, the daily form, tips from Australia's most respected racing analysts and more. Trot's Vision brings you all the live action every day at home or on your phone. And best of all, it's free. Lap up Trot's Vision. Lap up the trots. Visit thetrots.com.au. For over 40 years, Kubota's range of agricultural, construction, mowing and implement machinery has helped to shape and build Australia. Kubota's new and improved models continue to deliver outstanding quality, performance, reliability and value. Always ready to get the job done. Visit kubota.com.au to view the latest online catalogue or contact your local Kubota dealer for your copy today. Kubota. Shaping Australia. Hi, it's Andrew Bensley here. The John Allen Better Home Living Spring Sale is on again. That means there's massive reductions on hundreds of items like TVs, air conditioners, fridges, washers, cooking appliances, beds and even barbecues. Plus there's free delivery. And a hot tip, they guarantee to beat any online price on stocked items across the store. Don't miss the John Allen Better Home Living Spring Sale. See the specials at John Allen. Stay in pole position this week with radio's number one motorsport show, The Driver's Seat with Matt McKeldin and Stephen Johnson. Stadium Super Trucks boss Nathan Kayser reveals the real Barry Ryan. People misunderstand Barry. You know, we see him for the guy that swears on TV and does that sort of stuff, but he's an incredible bloke. Last time we spoke to Barry Ryan on this show, so I think he was watching maths. Um, you, you think that's a joke? That's not a that's joke. That's dead serious. <laughs> yeah, that was dead serious. <laughs> Download The Driver's Seat at to listen. Listen now. Hi. 
I'm Tim from Red Energy. The Australian-made logo is a true mark of Australian authenticity. So, for Red Energy to be certified to use the famous green and gold Australian-made logo, well, it's fair to say it's something we're pretty proud of. Here at Red, we're owned by the mighty Snowy Hydro, and that makes us 100% Australian. We're also based right here in Melbourne, so you can speak with a local who understands your needs. So, if supporting Australian means something to you, switch to Red today. Call 131 806. Off the bench with Hutchie and Pickers for Maccas and Tire Power. Whenever you've got spare change yes. from a purchase, you put them in the jar for the kids. I do. When they're here, I'll just give them some money to spend so I don't have to go and raid my bank account. How much was in there? $550. And did you go all to Mia? No. Well, how did you divvy it? I gave them $250 each. Yes, and what's the what's the third bit? Oh, it was a $70 administration fee. <laughs> <laughs> Off the bench, Saturday morning on SEN. You're listening to SEN's coverage of the 2021 NAB AFL Draft. For tyre power, draft three tyres, get your fourth tyre free on Falcon Passenger Tyres. Great to have you company for the 2021 AFL Draft. We're live from Marvel Stadium, Nick Del Santo and I, Nick Del Santo. 322 game superstar, pick 13 back in 2001. And the dream's about to unfold for quite a few young draftees tonight. 20 picks we expect tonight and then the remainder of the draft tomorrow night. And then there's an extra day with the rookie draft and everything that comes after that, great to have your company. We're here for Tyre Power. Tyre Power, the number one draft pick for tyre safety and protecting you on the road. Nick, it's been a big first hour. It's been great so far, but now there'll be a few people getting a little nervous. That was just the entree as we lead into what is the main course and then ultimately the dessert later on tonight <laughs> as well, Duano. But, yeah, there's a lot of anticipation to he- uh, here tonight. We've seen a handful of the clubs walk in. An unusual situation. It was even a little bit different last year, so the... Draft to be called by, uh, here by Gil McLaughlin. All 18 clubs are here at Marvel Stadium with us, yet the players are down the road at the London Tavern in Richmond as well. So it's a little bit of a weird combination, but ultimately I think we're going to get a similar result. And uh, as I mentioned, nerves, anticipation, a little bit of excitement, but I think ultimately it's about the players tonight. Mm. And it can be about the clubs probably tomorrow morning. Uh, tomorrow morning. Tonight it's about 20 young men getting their name called out and getting the opportunity to make a career out of football. So do you know many of these kids? Do you know Finn Callahan? We just talked to the Sandringham Dragons yep. uh, talent manager and um, they are from down your way, a few of them, and a few of the coaches from down that way you tap into as well. I was very fortunate to actually interview Finn Callahan last week with a mate of his, Blake Howes, which is a really interesting mm-hmm. story. They went to kindergarten together, did all kick together, did everything together, and then ultimately they might get drafted tonight. So we expect Finn to go extremely high in the top, well, definitely in the top five. Where it ultimately falls, we'll wait and see. And Blake is uh, probably in the late teens, if not early 20s. So we might get the possibility where two childhood mates, families have become extremely close given the amount of sporting events they've been to together for the last 18-odd years, where they could get drafted on the same night. So there's some really exciting and really good stories out of it, Duano. Yeah, that's the hard part because Finn Callahan knows he's going to go tonight. Yep. Mac Andrew, uh, Josh Rochelle probably go to Adelaide. Uh, we, we know that those up the top end will not be as nervous, but... It's around that pick 15, 16, 17, because if you don't get picked in the first 20 tonight, you've got an extra night's sleep to get through. Does that mean you get to soak it up for an extra 24 hours, or is it negative that that means you probably won't be sleeping tonight as well as last night? But uh, I think there's probably a handful of plays, and we touched on this earlier, Dwayne, with, with the amount of publicity and talk and knowledge of these plays. Now, we're not clearly not at the American level where we know every player through the college system, but it's definitely increased over recent years with our knowledge of who they are. It's been stunted a little bit given the last two years of limited football, but I reckon the majority of those players, let's say 30 to 40, know that they'll be drafted in the next night, being tonight or tomorrow. You've got to feel for those other ones, Dwayne, that just don't know Mm. if they get the opportunity at all. So that could be possibly tomorrow night. If not tomorrow night, they've got to get to the rookie draft the following night. Yeah, that is going to make it tough for them. So the draft not far away as soon as Gil... McLaughlin, the boss of the AFL, walks out, then uh, we will take that coverage live from the courtesy of Fox Footy. Keep your texts coming through during the course of the evening as well. 0433 98 1116 if you'd like to join Nick Dow Santo and I. That text number 0433 98 
11 16. Uh, we get some strange ones at Dow, but that's the fun of the text machine. I get it during the day. Yes. Uh, sometimes you get one from left field. Sorry, could you repeat the last half an hour? I was occupied reading the bio of the punk band The Stranglers. So there you go. Uh, yeah. Do we have to do that? Are you saying you want me to repeat? No, I don't think we will. But I did, I did see the Stranglers live in Toronto <laughs> one day. So they one night. I don't know the oh, Stranglers. Yeah, Golden Brown. Um, yeah, they had a couple of good okay. ones back in the day. So uh, not far away from North Melbourne with pick one. Finn Callahan, we expect to go pick two to the Giants. Although we expect the Giants to make a bid on Sam Darcy. Whether they go for Nick Dacos as a bid as well. Um, are you surprised that they didn't talk to Nick Dacos? Am I surprised? No, they're wasting his time if yeah, they do. Yeah, I think theirs as well. Now, now you speak about clubs doing their due diligence, and Brad Scott touched on this, and we know this as well. Dwayne, and you, I'm sure you hear about this lo- uh, a lot doing your three-hour slots every day. That, that, that Once again, this isn't a 12-month project. This isn't recruited. This has been going for years and years, and the surname Dacos obviously draws a lot more attention. But these guys are busy. They had been, you know, excluding probably the last 18 or so months, travelling Australia and sometimes the world, meeting mm. players, and they meet them multiple times. I know there's clubs that have met the same player three to four times in the last fortnight or so just to find that last bit of detail that they need to know to ultimately make a really good decision. So does that surprise me? Probably not, because at the end of the day, we know where the Dacos name belongs and where it will ultimately end up tonight. I spoke to Dad today and asked him, I asked Peter, uh, is Nick ready to go round one? Does he think he'll be able to play round one? Here's what uh, the Marvel had to say, Peter Dacos, about his son. And I know you don't want to put pressure on Nick, but do you think he's ready to play? Would he be ready to play round one, do you think? Oh, look, again, you know, um, uh, as I said earlier, Dwayne, he's, he, he's coming from, um, you know, that, that NAB that nab level. He, he, he played in the reserves and he's trained with them. And, um, you know, I, I know a lot's been said about had he have been eligible, uh, you know, this year to play, he would have played a lot of games. But, you know, it's, it's one thing saying and it's another thing actually, you know, playing in the hurly-burly. So having said that... Um, yeah, look, he, he gets through a preseason. I think he's as he, he's as good a chance as, as you know the other thirty on the list. So thirty five players on the list. So you know he'll probably get looked at a little bit closer. Um, it, it'll get back to how he's going to be used and how he's going to be managed. But I'd imagine that you know he, he'll um, you know he's starting off a. Uh, a good line here, and he's probably going to get every chance to feature in the first game. Peter Dacos, uh, what a star he was, 250 games, uh, 1990 Collingwood Premiership player, five-time Collingwood leading goal kicker and AFL Hall of Famer as well. Some say the greatest Collingwood player of all time. Do you reckon Dad was a little bit conflicted there where he wanted to play down his son's expectations and didn't <laughs> want to roll him out round one and probably at the MCG, but also saying, hey... He's damn good as well, and he deserves to be there. Everything goes according to plan over the summer. He did not want to make it about himself as well, Peter. I think yeah. he was knowing that he didn't want to, and I was happy to not go down the political route with him today and not get trying to extract the big headline, but he didn't want Peter Dacos says to be the headline tomorrow. I think he more wants it for Collingwood's side of the point. Uh, Nick Dacos gets chosen, not Peter Dacos' son gets chosen. How long will Nick Dacos be Peter Dacos' son for until he can just be his own man? Uh, Yeah, that's going to be hard. When you've got a dad that was that good, uh, it would be hard. Gary Abbott Jr.? Jr. Junior's done it. Junior now I think he's his own entity. Oh, absolutely. And I think he did that a long, long time ago. But Gary Abbott Jr. can stand on his own. He's not always senior's son. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, Although there is still that argument. I've still got to say, and as far as I'm concerned, the two greatest players I've ever seen in my life have the same surname. Gary Ablett. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So Brad Johnson thinks that Nick Dacos, I notice on the Fox footy coverage, thinks that Nick Dacos is the best player in this draft. Manny Rendell said a year ago that he was ready to play if he was available this year, which is a great sign, even though they haven't played a lot of footy in recent times. Yeah, it's an interesting one because we're speaking about Horn Francis and we expect his name to be called out very shortly by North Melbourne. But I guess, and I'm going to go a little bit broader than that, as just a football lover, that we get to see these young guys and there's talk that Horn Francis is quite possibly the best number one pick of the last, you know, decade or so. And you think about, well, Sam Walsh, I know Cam Rayner hasn't shown it just yet, but... He could be anything when he gets his body right. There's a handful of really good first number one picks. And just and Matty Rao, like you, yep. you go, okay, he's better than all of those guys. And I'm excited with what I've seen over the last five years, let alone there might be better. So I think we're in a great position 
as a competition again, Dwayne. And we are speaking a little bit more about the competition after speaking to Brad Scott in particular. But our game's in great hands. To think that these young men could roll out of an under-18 style competition and play round one and possibly have an impact, that's exciting. And that, that puts bums on seats, eyeballs on the television, ears in our headphones as well. Do I know that mm. this is good? Our game's in really good hands. So how much is there an onus on the clubs to make Collingwood pay a large price for Nick Dacos? Or are they wasting our time and their time the Giants or the Gold Coast or even Adelaide are picked four by even reading out mm. Nick Dacos's name because they know they won't get him. Yeah, well, my understanding from speaking to a few clubs in the last even six months that the days have gone where you know that they're just going to get there and let it slip through to that particular club. You've got to be honest and you've got to hold them accountable. So, no, I would not be shocked, whoever it may be, and we're expecting in the top three, that whoever that is that says, no, no, we're going to call out the surname Dacos, and they need to match it. Same as Darcy. I, I think you need to hold clubs accountable. That's fair. I don't think you would be disappointed or filthy if you're the Western Bulldogs or the Collingwood Football Club to have to use the points to match those bids. They're expecting it. We've spoken to Graham Wright going back to mm. the trade period um, a month or so ago. They're well aware, hence why they've been um, moving up or moving back in the draft to get those points to equate to what they exactly need, knowing that those points at the top end, it starts at 3,000. So if it is pick one and they owe 3,000 points and it works its way down slowly, 2,500, 2,234. So it's a healthy number. But if you love your player, you've got to pay the price. There's no issue with that, Dwayne. And we're told David Noble has returned a negative test, so he will be in attendance tonight. There are a bit of, uh, there's a few COVID stories floating around with uh, people getting COVID, people from uh, clubs getting COVID. So... That's a factor. There is a spread of people around the country, so not everybody in one room. We've been to drafts before when everybody has been in the room downstairs, so what a change that's been, but probably a change for the better given how dangerous it could be to have everybody in the one room. Were you a, were you a draft pick? Were you, I was, you were talking about me a lot before yeah. and you put me on the spot. Tell us your story just well, quickly. Um, well, I was pre-the-draft, so in essence... Once upon a time, now you have, what, 60-odd players get picked, 70-odd players. Back when I was up for grabs from outside of the VFL, there was only 24 picks. Mm. That was it. Every club, and there was a 12-team comp, every club had two Form 4s to go and sign someone from outside of Victoria. So, essentially, there was only 24 picks. So, yeah, I was on a, I was given a Form 4 by Geelong. I was offered a Form 4 by Collingwood, by the way. They first gave me... They called me up, flew me over... Um, let me drive home in their car, uh, said you're our player next year, so we're looking forward to having you. And then I found out um, from Geelong, who called me up, and said, you know, Collingwood don't want you anymore. They're going to use their two Form 4s on Craig Starsevich mm-hmm. and Michael Christian. Oh. And I said, I did not know that. I thought I was going to play for Collingwood. Uh, they said, we'll sort out the car situation. We'll actually give you the same contract as Collingwood were going to give you but we're going to use one of our Form 4s on you because they're about to expire and not have any of theirs available for you. Come and play for us. So that's the way it evolved. So, yeah, I mean, there's 24 Form 4s, 12-team 12, 12 comp back then, Del. Yeah. That's how old I am. Play each other 15 team times. Comp. I know. How ridiculous is that? We're about to become a 20-team comp the way we're travelling with a couple of new teams coming in, you would hope, Tasmania in three years and maybe the Northern Territory in seven or eight years, which would be fantastic for the comp. Everybody plays each other once. So we're not far away from handing over to Gil McLaughlin for the opening pick in the 2021 AFL Draft. Great to have Ty Power on board. We're live here at Marvel Stadium as the sun fades on a beautiful day here in Melbourne. We're going to bring you a chat with a few of the draft picks. We're going to bring you a chat with a few of those that are doing the picks. We're here for tyre power. Tyre power, the number one draft pick for tyre safety and protecting you on the road. Tyre power, a quick break and back with Gil McLaughlin. For over 40 years, Kubota's range of agricultural, construction, mowing and implement machinery has helped to shape and build Australia. Kubota's new and improved models continue to deliver outstanding quality, performance, reliability and value. Always ready to get the job done. Visit kubota.com.au to view the latest online catalogue or contact your local Kubota dealer for your copy today. Kubota, shaping Australia. At ENS, we're proud to stock Westinghouse ovens, cooktops, fridges and dishwashers and have done so for over 50 years. Built in Adelaide, Westinghouse ovens in stunning black stainless steel 
come with unbelievable features like air fry, steam assisted cooking, and pyro clean self cleaning. ENS has a massive range of Westinghouse appliances, and our staff are Westinghouse experts. And we won't be beaten on price. So visit one of our nine showrooms today or shop online and get the ENS feeling with Westinghouse. Tab Queensland Summer Racing Carnival has finally arrived. With more than 20 million in prize money and bonuses, Australia's most exciting summer racing carnival continues at the Gold Coast with the Tattersalls Race Day this Saturday. Don't miss a single minute of the on-course action, including the recognition stakes. Visit queenslandsummercarnival.com.au for more. Gamble responsibly. If gambling becomes an issue, call 1-800-858-858. Being at the greatest events on the sporting calendar is what makes sport fans tick. And to witness the biggest sporting moments in Australia, Ballpark Entertainment can get you there. AFL, NRL, horse racing, soccer, basketball, cricket, boutique events and more. Ticketing, corporate suites and money can't buy experiences get the best access to the best sporting events with Ballpark Entertainment. Making memories. Ballparkentertainment.com.au you're listening to SEN's coverage of the 2021 NAB AFL Draft. For tyre power, draft three tyres, get your fourth tyre free on Falcon Passenger Tyres. Live from Marvel Stadium, great to have you with us on SEM. We're bringing you the draft live tonight. If you just tuned in, just jumped in your car, the first 20 picks are going to be done tonight, then the rest of the draft is going to happen tomorrow night. And then there's a rookie draft. So it's going to be a three-day process. It's going to be a long process. Every club is on the clock tonight and tomorrow night. So you, you only have a set amount of time to make your pick. But we expect tonight, Dell, that it won't take clubs that long to make their pick. Or do they wait and allow clubs that want to bid for their pick, perhaps, mm. to trade up? to come and grab their so pick. on my if... way in, I spoke to a couple of clubs and, and their understanding was they think about the first six picks are pretty much locked in. They feel like the majority of clubs understand what those six are going to be or who those players will be. And then it's after that that the, the options become. But you actually raised a good point, Dwayne. I hadn't thought of that. Just to delay a moment of time, if I'm... If it, is it five minutes they get per selection? Yeah, unless tomorrow night, I think. Unless tomorrow night, rightly so, because tomorrow night could go for 15 days. So I think <laughs> that's, a, that's a really wise call on behalf of the AFL. But if you give a moment of time, Dueno, that it allows clubs to come to you. Now, the only time you wouldn't do that is if you were fixated on one particular player that you can't believe they're still on the board, that you just fire that shot straight away and keep the show moving tonight. I'm just having a look through all 18 clubs Duano, and just thinking for those clubs that won't have an involvement tonight. So I can't see Carlton having an involvement. Collingwood, Fremantle will have two players. Well, Geelong, Collingwood will when they grab Nick Dacos, obviously. True, true. Um, Geelong, may, we may not hear from them. And th Well, the only way we can hear from these clubs is if they trade up. Uh, we won't be hearing from... Uh, the Ds will just slip in. Apologies, I was going to say the Ds. Richmond, they're in. St Kilda's in. Sydney's in. West Coast is in. And the Western Bulldogs, we won't hear from as their first pick is currently 23, which we assume to be pushed back to 25. So there's a few clubs that probably get to relax a little bit tonight, knowing that their action will start tomorrow night. Yeah, the Melbourne pick, pick 17, they got from the Western That's Bulldogs right. as part Correct. of a trade deal. A few of the other teams that have picks have also got their picks from other clubs. Ironically, the Giants, with pick two, have the pick that was Collingwood's pick. Right. It could have been Collingwood's pick, but they're going to end up having pick two anyway, Collingwood, uh, even though they don't have pick two. The other story which we will eventually get to, and it'll be five, ten years down the track, do I know, is if there is trades. And as I look through the clubs, there's a handful of clubs in the first round that have received that pick from somebody else and will always be held against that club. Why did we trade out that pick? You know, Fremantle's got pick six, which they received from Carlton as part of the Adam Chera deal. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's my God. I can't believe we gave up Adam Chera for this particular player that's gone on to be a Hall of Famer. So that's it for Carlton. You're not involved tonight because your pick six is in the hands of Fremantle. That is correct. Pick 12 is now in the hands of Port Adelaide. It was received from the Sydney Swans as part of the Peter Laddams deal. Pick so that 16. that was a shuffle around with pick 16. That is Port. correct. Yep. 16 is, was, is now in Sydney's hands, received from Port Adelaide as part of the Peter Laddams trade. 17 is Melbourne, as you mentioned, received from the Western Bulldogs in that pick swap. But then it's probably tomorrow night where the majority of those pick swaps will get to. So 22, 23, 27, 33 and 37 have all changed hands and therefore will belong to a different club to what it originally was placed in. 
And do you think there'll be many players out of tonight's draft that will play in round one? Jason Horn francis will play round one. Nick Dacos is going to be an interesting one. I think the expectation is that he will play round one. There's a couple of taller players that probably won't. Do you think Sam Darcy would play? Because I'm not sure, given the Western Bulldogs with Jamari Eugle Hagen holding him back mm. a little, yep. and that might have been for other reasons. It might not be the maturity of his body. But for a Sam Darcy, do they bring him in and try and play him as a key defender? They look like they've got their, their forward line kind of set. So do you bring him in there? You wouldn't want to ruck him, would you? It's a long-term play. I mean, he's yeah. 204 centimetres. He's 73 kegs, as it states. So there's a lot of man to grow well, there. Yeah. You know, 73 ke- kegs, 204 centimetres. But the other one is you don't want to throw him to the wolves. This is a long-term project. The other one is does, will he earn his spot? We know, we know he's highly talented, hence why he's going to get his name read out very early tonight. But is he able to leapfrog these guys that have been there, that are durable, that have done the work for the last decade or so, and ultimately knowing that they're around the mark to be in finals contention and possibly get that premiership? So we're seeing a couple of players interviewed at the moment on the TV screen by you. Who is the one you're interviewing on Fox Footy with the San Francisco Dance Club was that jumper on. Blake Howes, I it's think the, it was. Yeah, it is. That's it his is. choice. The San Francisco Dance yeah. Club jumper. Yeah, the boys rocked up in, in casual kit, as you can see. <laughs> well, you won't be able to see. Um, that's Finn Callahan and Blake Howes. These are the two boys that went to kindergarten together and have grown up through the Sandy Dragons. Exceptional young men. The thing that struck me about both of them, my God, they're tall. For the style of footballer that they are, running half-backers, wingers, it's like Bontem Pally as a 17, 18-year-old. It just mm. blew me away. And then you have to pose the question, or, and I, I know these guys relatively well, just, you know, through passings and things like that. And you go, what position are you playing again? And it instantly makes you feel like you haven't played football for decades because the game has changed so much about what they're physically able to do. But more confident than ever, these kids, aren't they? Yeah, they are. They are. But they were, they were lovely kids, really engaging, and I wish them all the best tonight. They're yeah. going to, uh, it's going to be an exciting future for whoever gets to pick them up. It is. So Gil McLaughlin's about to walk to the podium here at Marble Stadium. We're not far away from getting this draft underway for Tyre Power. Tyre Power, the number one draft pick for Tyre Safety and protecting you on the road. Great to have tyre power on board. Again, North Melbourne will be the team that kicks it off with pick one. The Giants, Collingwood's pick, pick two, and then the Gold Coast, pick three. In fact, I think we can take a quick ad break because Gill's just walked back off. and We've got two minutes to spare and get an ad break out of the way. And we're straight back. We're the number one pick for North Melbourne. At ENS, we're proud to stock Westinghouse ovens, cooktops, fridges and dishwashers and have done so for over 50 years. Built in Adelaide, Westinghouse ovens in stunning black stainless steel come with unbelievable features like air fry, steam assisted cooking and pyro clean self cleaning. ENS has a massive range of Westinghouse appliances and our staff are Westinghouse experts and we won't be beaten on price. So visit one of our nine showrooms today or shop online and get the ENS feeling with Westinghouse. Tab Queensland Summer Racing Carnival has finally arrived. With more than 20 million in prize money and bonuses, Australia's most exciting summer racing carnival continues at the Gold Coast with the Tattersalls Race Day this Saturday. Don't miss a single minute of the on-course action, including the recognition stakes. Visit queenslandsummercarnival.com.au for more. Gamble responsibly. If gambling becomes an issue, call 1-800-858-858. Your local Hyundai showroom is back open and they've got the Hyundai Venue in stock right now. That means you can drive away in a compact SUV that fits into your life and maxes out the fun today. The Venue fits comfort, style, safety features and technology into every ride. And it's yours with auto from just $25,990 drive away. Why wait? Spring into your local Hyundai dealer before it's gone. T's and C's apply. Speak to your dealer for details. I was so lucky to enjoy the truly fantastic trip to Mildura this year. And I have to say, if you're planning a weekend away or a couple of weeks break, you simply must start your journey in Mildura. Campbell Brown here. Jet boating, water skiing and great fun on the golf course. There's so much to do in Mildura for everyone. Experience Australia's food bowl. Taste the wines, the local beers and oh, the gin distillery. Planning an action-packed weekend with the family and friends? Visit Mildura. I did and I absolutely loved it. You're listening to SEN's coverage of the 2021 NAB AFL Draft. For tyre power, draft three tyres, get your fourth tyre free on Falcon Passenger Tyres. 
We're live from Marble Stadium. Nick Dalsetto and I bring you the entire first round of the 2021 AFL draft. We did think it was going to start at around 10 past 7. Uh, then we thought it was going to start at around 20 past 7. We are expecting it to start in around two minutes from now. So we're not far from getting it underway. Again, North Melbourne pick one, Giants pick two, Gold Coast three, Adelaide four, Hawthorne five, Fremantle, that Carlton pick that Nick Dowsono told you about is pick six, handed to Fremantle by the Blues. Richmond, seven. Fremantle, eight. St Kilda, nine. West Coast, ten. Essendon, 11. Port Adelaide have 12. 13 for the Giants. Pick 14, the Brisbane Lions. Pick 15, Richmond. Pick 16, Sydney. Pick 17, Melbourne. And pick 18, the Brisbane Lions. Nick Dacos might go pick one. He might not. Here's what Nick Dacos had to say about Collingwood and his coach, Craig McRae. Been there for a few years now. Uh, lucky enough to go in through their programs. And it just it's always felt like home for me. Um, and then with Dad and Josh playing there and Josh currently playing there, um, I just always wanted to play with him. And I know a few of the boys. Um, and it just, yeah, as I said, it feels like home. Um, and I feel appreciated there, and I can't wait to get started. Yeah, I had uh, an hour meeting with, with Craig, and he's been really good. Um, a lot of the boys have already um, already loving him, and we can't wait to start playing under him. Um, he's a good relationship builder, uh, and, he's yeah, he's been really good for us already. Nick Dacos uh, sitting next to his brother, getting ready for the draft, and Dad as well, Peter Dacos, is alongside them, so it's fantastic to see them. All together, the Collingwood family and uh, the Collingwood family is about to unite Nick Dacos with Collingwood. Let's go to Gil McLaughlin, the AFL CEO. On behalf of the AFL, I would like to acknowledge the Wurundjeri people, the traditional owners of the land we've been on today, and pay our respects to Elders past, present and emerging. We acknowledge we play our great game on this land and respect the cultures of all First Peoples, their contribution to our nation and contribution to the game of Australian rules football. Tonight is an exciting time for our AFL competition and an even more exciting time for the players who are waiting patiently. Well, thanks to Fox Footy and KO, we were taking you around the country tonight to meet our next generation of stars, all hoping to hear their names called and to be able to realise their dreams of becoming an AFL footballer. In a normal year, the nominees would have completed months of matches, national carnivals and exhibitions to plan for the draft, but instead of adapted to the restrictions forced upon them and prepared in the most unique circumstances. But as former number three draft pick Chris Judd told a group of AFL draft prospects earlier this year, regardless of the situation, there is an opportunity to gain an edge on your competition. Remaining diligent through adversity comes opportunity. So despite the pandemic challenges the community faced this year, it has done nothing to deter the enthusiasm and the commitment of potential draftees. We received over 860 draft nominations from players in every state and territory across the country. The talent that is selected tonight has the opportunity now to regenerate our game replacing greats such as Sean Burgoyne and Eddie Betts, who have recently stepped into retirement. Sean was a round one draft selection, while Eddie was chosen in the pre-season draft. These two greats played more than 750 games and showed that the opportunity to be great can come from any position in tonight's NAB AFL draft, tomorrow's latest selections or... Friday's rookie draft. And from everything we've seen and heard in recent weeks, members of this year's draft class have all the talents to make an immediate impact at the clubs that select them. Now, while there isn't a spot for everyone, is a clear indicator that our game is strong and our pathways continue to continue to deliver the best Australian sporting talent. It's a life-changing moment to hear your name called. And regardless of what number you're selected, it is an achievement in itself to have the opportunity to play the game at the highest level. So to those of you selected, your new clubs will provide you with the tools and teachings to be successful. But it's up to each and every one of you to determine how you use this opportunity to write your own future. You can do extraordinary things, 
but you have to make it happen and take the time to enjoy it along the way. I wish you all the best of luck. On behalf of the AFL, I'd like to acknowledge and send our thanks to our long-standing partner, NAB. NAB's support of the AFL Rising Stars program, staying with NAB AFL Auskick, is pivotal to our ability to create a world-class talent pathway for young footballers, of which the draft is the culmination. NAB's support of the AFL and these programs allows young players to realise lifelong dreams of becoming professional footballers. And tonight, that dream becomes a reality for a select group of young men from around Australia. So thank you to NAB, and now I welcome the Chief Operating Officer, Les Matheson. Thanks very much, Gil. NAB has proudly partnered with the AFL since 2002, and we've enjoyed watching the game grow. We've continued to expand our partnership to support footballers from NAB AFL Auskick to the big time. And that includes NAB League, NAB AFL and AFLW Rising Star programs, and the NAB AFLW competition itself. The NAB AFL Rising Stars program was the first AFL program we partnered with, and we're excited to have been supporting the next generation of AFL stars for the past 20 years. Each year, we award the number one pick a $10,000 portfolio and the opportunity to engage with a dedicated NAB private banking manager to assist with their financial goals. I want to congratulate all the players participating in tonight's NAB AFL draft. I admire your resilience and your ongoing dedication to your goals despite the challenges faced over the past couple of years. I wish you all the very best of luck for tonight and every success for the great season ahead. Thank you, Les. Well, the time has now come. The clubs are ready and waiting in their selection rooms. Round one starts now, and the North Melbourne Football Club have the first selection. You're now on the clock. And so, for the first time in their history, the Kangaroos so North with now the have number a couple of minutes to make their choice. So we'll sit back and wait until they hand their choice to Gil McLaughlin, but we know that they would have their choice ready to go. But they do have five minutes to spend, Nick Dow They Dalsetto. do. Probably just waiting for that last opportunity. Do I know we touched on it before? They've already had two solid offers in the previous month, which they have knocked back. And for those that aren't aware, this is the first time that North Melbourne has had the first pick in a national draft. So a special moment for that football club and a special moment for whoever they read out in under four and a half minutes time from now. But you just think about the possibilities, the Horn Francis, but more importantly, where he fits into their football club. We know they've got a lot of good young players coming through that they've been building over the last four to five years. They're starting to show some signs and I'm sure North Melbourne supporters that have either watched them on TV or have seen them live in the last couple of years will see glimpses of hope. Glimpses of Larky in that forward line. Zerha, the bull. But they've also got this midfield group that are growing together. Jai Simkin, the reigning best and fairest from last season. So they've got a young group coming through. They just need to add some depth. And if you can get the best player in the country, and we assume that's going to be Jason Horn francis then you just add that. It just complements what's already there, Dwayne. It's exciting times. It is, David Noble. Uh, Hoyne's there just uh, having a chat about what they're going to do. They're, they're kind of chatting without chatting at the moment. Do you so think they've been told just to chat almost like at the end of a news bulletin when the lights are going down and they're yeah. getting and they just look like they're talking to each other as they're folding their paper? Even though they're not talking. Got nothing to say to each other. They've spent so much time together over the last 10 years. Do I know they've used every conversation up? But they've been told just to drag this out for a couple more minutes. With only three, three minutes and 25 seconds left on the clock, some young man's name's about to get read out and change their life forever. What's the collective noun for Dacos? There's three of them sitting together. It is nice to see the three of them sitting together, the Dacos boys Dacos with is, Dad. Yeah, it is fantastic the, to see them. Brady Rawlings, who is now on the phone, so officially putting the call through to Gil McLaughlin, who's picking up the phone. And it'll be Gil's responsibility to walk back out on stage. He's going to cl- cover a few miles tonight. They should have the GPS on Gil, the back and forth he'll be doing mm. from backstage to centre stage to read out a young man's name. So we're just keeping a close eye on Brady Rawlings representing North Melbourne Football Club. Just putting through with two minutes and 44 seconds left on the clock until they run out of time. What happens if you do run out of time? There's a scenario we haven't got to just 50 yet. 50-minute penalty, I think. <laughs> <Is it? laughs> yeah, you I think you the draft. Picked. So the, the Fox footy coverage is on. It's a split screen. North Melbourne 
and the Bulldogs, as if to say, OK, is North Melbourne going to bid on Sam Darcy with the number one pick and not actually take Jason Horn Francis? They're going to throw a little spanner in the works. You would have thought this conversation could have been had over the last mm. two years at some stage. We've had a lot of downtime, I would have thought, Dueno. But we talk about suspense. We talk about dragging mm. it out with two minutes and five seconds left on the clock. Brady Rawlings on the phone. Who would he be on the phone to then? If he's not talking to Gill, is he talking to somebody about the thought of somebody trading up to their pick and taking number one? Could the Adelaide Crows be doing something crazy and try and take the local boy? Well... Has it been a standoff? Oh, this is, a, I mean, there needs to be something put together post this mm. by Fox Football to put together a documentary about just to explain all these scenarios about exactly what is going on. Like Draft Day, fantastic movie. Give us the insight behind the scenes about why Brady Rawlings has now been on the phone for at least three minutes with one minute and 30 seconds left on the clock before a name needs to be read out. So the boys aren't flinching. They're, they've got the split screen. So one on North Melbourne, the other one on the boys at the London Tavern. And it, uh, everyone is just in suspense, just watching and waiting to see what name is ultimately read out with one minute and 15 seconds left on the clock. So it's a five-man team that is doing the thought process for North Melbourne as yep. it speaks. Two of the five-man team on the phones. So Brady Rawlings has just hung his phone up. Uh, there's still a split screen on the Western Bulldogs as if Sam Darcy is part of the conversation, so we'll keep an eye on this. There's a trade-in. There's been a swap. So Lino. picks 32 and 34 to the Bulldogs for pick 23 to Geelong. Okay, so there has been already a little points shift. Possibly for Darcy. Okay. So I don't know why Brady Rawlings was on the phone if that was that conversation. Mm. That might have been completely separate, but they're... Has been a pick swap. And as we look at the clock, 30 seconds to go. So to repeat that, picks 32 and 34 going to the Dogs for picks 23 going to Geelong. Is that relating to the Darcy manoeuvre? Mm, to try and make sure that they can get a little bit more. The pick is in. Okay, here we go. Here's Gil McLaughlin, the CEO of the AFL, to read out North Melbourne's number one pick in the 2021 AFL With draft. Pick one of the 2021 NAB AFL draft, North Melbourne Football Club have selected... Jason Horn Francis from the South Adelaide Football Club. What a moment for Jason Horn Francis. So they took the Hornet after all that, Nick. The Hornet. He's officially in the uh, in the North Melbourne Arden Street Football Club. What a fantastic pick it is. And we, we, we just all had a little glimmer there for a moment that something was about to happen that we haven't predicted for the last 12 or so months. But that's really exciting news for Jason Horn Francis and his family who are on screen at the moment. They haven't jumped up in a band, I must say. They're not overly excited. We would only assume that he's probably told this uh, quite a while ago. But um, oh, he's a significant player, isn't he, Dwayne? And all the numbers that we've seen in regards to raw numbers, but also his highlights, his contested balls, exceptional, his defensive efforts. So a man that can do it on both sides of the footy. He impacts on the scoreboard. He's explosive. He's great with his physicality. He's a great height. He's 185, so six one in the old books and weighs 81 kegs with probably a fair bit more to put on to. And what I love about this, Dwayne, and we often speak about, well, who do they play like? Tell me who he mm. is in, in the modern game. And we never go with the dud. We always go to the top of the tree and they're comparing him to Patrick Dangerfield. So if North mm. Melbourne have brought in the equivalent of a Paddy Dangerfield, then it's all roses from here. So three minutes and 50 seconds left for the Giants with pick two. Do they go for... Nick Dacos, do they go for Sam Darcy? Do they at least force the hand of the Bulldogs or do they simply stick to the guy they probably know they're going to get anyway, Finn Callahan? That's the big question now. Over to you, Giants. Well, three minutes and 30 seconds to go. So we assume that every club was well aware that Jason Horn Francis was always going number one. The, the Kangas had put that on the agenda months ago, even though they had a couple of bids to try and draw him out of there, but they've gone with that. So you would only assume that, therefore, the Giants were prepped for this scenario. They would have played out every scenario. It could be up to 50-odd cases about what clubs may be possibly doing, but... He's, uh, he's good to go. So we'll wait with three minutes to go for the Giants. And we're just getting a bit of a delayed reaction. We think that Jason Horn Francis has just found out mm. via, looks like, might be FaceTime on the old... So how did they not I'm be not watching sure. the screen? They might not, they might not have Foxtel. 
No, they may not have Fox. Don't think someone called them to too, let them know. Is it too early to say that Adelaide are a little bit behind the times? Is that a, is that a fair... <laughs> half an hour behind? <laughs> well, that was half and this a is your area of expertise. You're a, well, you're a South Panthers. Australian boy. Is the, he's got the, is the internet connection just come through there? He has got the Panthers jacket on, so uh, it is good to see he's jumped up. Now the family's jumped up, but it, it did look uh, initially as if they weren't that excited <laughs> about the <laughs> well, fact that, oh, well, we could have done this 15 minutes ago, they were saying. This, could have done this six months ago. So two minutes and two. 20 seconds left for the Giants to take their pick number two as we're just watching. Is that the great Malcolm Blight it handing is. over the jumper, the North Melbourne jumper to Jason Horn Francis? This is a bit more like it. Now they're up and about. The family's erupting in the background. A couple of quick poses wearing jumper number six. So he hasn't taken 18. They no, could have given him Sean Atley, of course. Okay, they could have given him the number 18 on his back, but maybe Shannon he's Grant. chosen number Shannon Grant. six. Shannon number Grant's six. old number six. Send through your text if you've got a better number six at North Melbourne over the course of the last 100 years. Tom Smith medalist. 0433 98 11 16. Um, and great to see. It was nice to see Blighty, former North Melbourne yep. Premiership star, Premiership what? Premiership star and coach yes. of North Melbourne as well, the first club that Blighty coached. We're going back now, and Adelaide's, well, one of the greatest of all time in Adelaide, if not maybe the third greatest between, to between um, uh, Barry Robran, the just departed superstar in Russell Ebert and uh, also Malcolm Blight. Let's go to Jason Horn Francis, who's speaking on Fox Footy. I'd like to live that. Um, yeah, it was a bit. It was a bit weird. Um, yeah, the, the TV shot the shut off, and um, yeah, we, we couldn't we couldn't see much. And yeah, luckily Benny Benny, my manager, um, hooked us up with his phone, and luckily we were able to watch it. But yeah, it's it's a pretty special moment. Yeah. So, what are you feeling right now? Is it relief? Is it excitement? What's bubbling underneath that pretty cool, calm and collected exterior? Yeah, definitely a lot of excitement. Um, yeah, I can't wait to get into things with um, yeah, the North Melbourne Footy Club and um, yeah, it's really, really exciting. It's a really special moment that I've got to share with um, yeah, some great people. Jason, they've got some great midfielders already, North Melbourne, some up-and-coming stars of the, of the competition. You're going to join forces with them. You must be excited to be able to learn from some of the best young talent that uh, we see in the game. Yeah, definitely. I think um, yeah, North are in the right on the right direction, and um, yeah, they've got a lot of young young talent, young midfielders, and um, I think I can learn yeah a lot of a lot of um, a lot of the players at the club. So yeah, it's going to be really exciting. So well, congratulations, the have, Jason. From this what is we understand, pick Sam Darcy. So with pick two, the Giants have chosen Sam Darcy. So now it's over to the Bulldogs to match the bid and make sure they get the father-son. Yeah, so to put that in perspective, so pick number two is worth 2,517 points. So just to confirm, the Giants have got pick two. They have picked Sam Darcy and now allows the Western Bulldogs to match that bid. They have to get the points to make it, uh, therefore, to have Darcy to their football club and then they can go from there. So you speak about holding clubs accountable Dueno, there's no doubt that the Western Bulldogs, and it's been on record for months, that they are right into Darcy as they should be, but now it is holding them accountable and actually making them pay the right price for that. So Sam Darcy is the key forward. He's 204 centimetres. We spoke about him. Only 73 kilograms as it currently stands. Out of the Oakley charge, he's been a Scotch college and obviously represented Vic Metro this year. This year. So we'll just wait and see that. Um, I don't know how much longer the Western Bulldogs need to say to the Giants, no, thank you. We'll be taking him, and he's been a part of our program for a very long time. So they've got about eight in the room, including CEO Amit Baines in the background there. We'll just and wait it does to, confirm uh, to see that, where that, it where does that falls. It confirm that the Giants think that Sam Darcy is the second best player. Well, they might have thought he was the best player in the country. Yep. They might have thought he was better than Jason Horn Francis, but they believe that he is the next best player available, and they have chosen Sam Darcy as their pick. So we'll wait and see. The Bulldogs now have to match it. We expect they will. And Sam Darcy is about to become a Western Baller. Here's Gil. Bid for Sam Darcy from the Oakley Chargers. And look at that smile. It is now official. Sam Darcy becomes the third generation Western Bulldogs, matching the smile here of... So there it is. They've matched the bid, as you can hear, and it is great that they've done that. The Western Bulldogs, we expected them to. It was a no-brainer, really. So Sam Darcy heads to the Western Bulldogs, and now the Giants have another five minutes 
to decide who they're going to pick next. Well, you'd like to think once again, Dwayne, I'm not sure if they're going to need their full five minutes, but they, they knew that this was going to happen. I just want to touch, while well, we do have a couple of minutes, just on the situation that we had. So we've, we're watching this live and we're watching a split screen of North Melbourne, then flips to Gil McLaughlin, who announces that Jason Horn Francis is the number one pick in the national draft. And there's no reaction. They, no. they, they don't flinch. Then moments later, he's holding the latest version of the iPhone. I could only assume by the size of it. It looked like it was an iPad, if not a desktop <laughs> screen. And they're watching it and then they delay. So it, it has cut out. So my comments so in regards to being a little down. bit, so as I, in my, in my jovial jest to say that they are a little bit behind the times, those in South Australia, who was actually spot on. It was a fact <laughs> that they <laughs> missed it. The young man's missed his no moment. And then a minute later, they've erupted. Oh, wow. So, uh, yes, Jason Horn Francis to North Melbourne. The Giants went for Sam Darcy with pick two. The Western Bulldogs have matched that. So the Western Bulldogs have had to use a lot of points, a lot of their picks coming up later. And now it's over to the Giants who have another three and a half minutes to decide whether they're going to try and nominate Nick Dacos or whether they'll grab Finn Callahan and not worry about Nick Dacos and making Collingwood accountable or whether they'll go for something different, the uh, Mac Andrew or uh, Josh Rochelle. Here is Sam Darcy. I'm still very nervous, but I'm um, <laughs> glad to have it all, all over now. How excited are you to get to the dogs? Oh, yeah, I'm unbelievably excited. It's, um, it's just a dream. I've been f forever and it's just... Um, just so excited to finally get get my name called out and um, be at the Dogs. So you're a third generation Western Bulldogs player. Who have been the biggest influences on your career so far? Um, yeah, I'd say my dad's probably been up there, but I'm um, also all the coaches over my journey had a huge impact on me, and um, yeah, very grateful for all the all the support I've been given over the years. Now you're still growing, Sam. Um, I think so. Yeah, I've um, shot up another couple of centimetres this year, which is um, which is nice. Now I've been told to ask, who cuts your hair? Who cuts my hair? Um, yeah. uh, there's a guy called Dom in Hawthorne who's, uh, I don't know, he's done, he does a good job, yeah. Congratulations, Sam. Look forward to you playing for the Western Bulldogs and seeing how your career unfolds. Thanks, Tom. Pressure that. Thank you. Tom Morris from Fox Footy giving the hairdresser a little bit of love there on the national coverage on Fox Footy. So, Sam Darcy is at the Dogs as pick two. And uh, his father, of course, Luke, was a star. And Dave was the grandfather. Dave was a football commentator back in the day. Here's Gil McLaughlin with the next pick. So pick three is in, and the Giants have decided to take... Finn Callahan. Finn Callahan. They didn't it's go for Nick Darcy. No, they didn't. Nick Dacos. Finn Callahan, pick number three. The boy we spoke about previously out of the Sandringham Dragons. He's a, he's a great size, Dwayne. He's the man I was touching on before. He grew up with Blake Howes, who we might hear his name later in tonight's draft call, but he's a superb size. Once again, we're going to compare him to somebody. He's a Marcus Bonson Pally type. Every club needs at least one Marcus, mm. if not a couple, but he uses the ball really well. He's a left footy, can play in multiple positions, and I guess, as we like to say these days, he's the modern, modern style midfielder. Long, raking left foot kick, uses it really well and, can, and athletically can get up and down the ground. His father was a 400 metre runner and an elite 400 metre runner, so he's brought in a few of those skill sets as well. So, a really exciting pick for the Giants. And you add him to what they've already got there and what they did, particularly off the back half of this year, and he'll slot in really nicely on any line of that football club. And they didn't use their full five minutes to grab him with that pick either, the Giants. The Gold Coast, and next, we're back with that pick. Stick around. It's the draft coverage on SEN for Tire Power. Hi, I'm Charlie from Red Energy. The Australian-made logo is a true mark of Australian authenticity. So, for Red Energy to be certified to use the famous green and gold Australian-made logo, well, it's fair to say it's something we're pretty proud of. Here at Red, we're owned by the mighty Snowy Hydro, and that makes us 100% Australian. We're also based right here in Melbourne, so you can speak with a local who understands your needs. So, if supporting Australian means something to you, switch to Red today. Call 131 806. Look, if you want a lush green backyard, there's one easy way to get it. Install Rainbird. Don't believe me? Look at the MCG's outfield. Check out the Sydney Cricket Ground's Jade Field of Envy. Perth's Opta Stadium. Spring green year-round. Your neighbour Derek's backyard. Now that's emerald turf. All of these places installed Rainbird. So talk to your landscaper about the irrigation and sprinkler systems. Rainbird, the intelligent use of water. Learn more at rainbird.com. Shh, can you hear that? Hang on, here it comes. 
The new Kia Niro has landed. Available as a hybrid, plug-in hybrid and full electric. It's Australia's broadest electric SUV range. And they're all available for immediate delivery. Technology moves fast. Meet three ways to catch up. The new Kia Niro electric SUV range. Check with your local Kia dealer for details. Kia. Movement that inspires. Lining up for the drink-wise at-home stakes. It's a wide open field. Corn chips and salsa is popular with the punters. A six-pack before the quaddy was an early scratching. There's no love for passed out on the back lawn today. And drifting further as red wine spills on the couch. But the market mover and clear favourite is have a water between drinks. The fans are embracing this horse from the Drinkwise stable. Be a winner at home watching the races. Remember, you won't miss a moment if you drink wise. You're listening to SEN's coverage of the 2021 NAB AFL Draft. For tyre power, draft three tyres, get your fourth tyre free on Falcon Passenger Tyres. We're live from Marvel Stadium and the number one pick in the 2021 AFL Draft, South Australian Jason Horn Francis, the number one pick for the Safety Hub. Visit the safetyhub.com.au. Visit them at 3 Cubit Way, Dandenong South or the safetyhub.com.au. Jason Horn Francis, pick one. Finn Callahan has gone essentially pick three, but really pick two. And uh, now we're waiting to see what the Gold Coast do. And they have nominated Nick Dacos as their pick. So they have the Gold Coast gone for the man that a lot of people thought was the number one player available in the draft. And now it's up to Collingwood to match that bid and make sure that he doesn't go to the Gold Coast. Well, he's not going to go to the Gold Coast. Let's, right. put, it, uh, let's put it completely bluntly. So that's worth 2,034 points. And at times you need to be a mathematician mm. to work out the point system. Well, we and got you here. Just, <laughs> I need the abacus just to keep on working through the numbers. And just to put the the uh, the pick value index into perspective, and speaking to a few clubs in the lead-up to tonight's draft, Duana, they say... No one really worries about the points and need, unless you need to worry about the points. <laughs> so if you Gilbert need Rock points, then that's all that matters. Gold Coast Suns bid for Nicholas Dacos from the Oakley Chargers. So Nicholas so, Dacos sorry to cut you off there, Nick, but no, just to make fine. it official, um, we were telling people that before Gil McLaughlin told us, but the pick is in, Nick Dacos and uh, Collingwood now from what we understand, have matched the bid. So Nick Dacos becomes a Collingwood player, joins his brother. So he should. Yeah, absolutely. The club that his father was a superstar at. What a moment it is for the Dacos family and the Collingwood Magpie family. What do you reckon it means to to Collingwood people, Dwayne, to to have that surname there? And there's already a son there as well, which is extremely special. But the build-up and the hype around this young man in particular has been off the charts about what he's done in, you know, limited games this year. I think he averaged his last three games was over 40 disposals. He averaged, he had the most in the NAB League leading up to that particular time. He kicks goals. He's got the sidestep like the old man. What does it mean for, even from a supporter base and maybe even a membership base to get another name like this to their football club? Well, you're asking the wrong guy because I love the father-son rule. Mm -hmm. Some people don't like it, so it compromises the draft. But I think it's fantastic because the fans are already invested in Nick Dacos. They want Nick Dacos to be theirs. Imagine if he did go to the Gold Coast. Imagine if Nick Dacos was playing for the Gold Coast next year. I mean, it's a great part of our game. As much as we want the Gold Coast to be successful... Yeah, take the Gold Coast out of it. I All can, right. Yeah. Oh, well, no, say I completely he was going agree. to the Adelaide Crows. Yeah, I okay? completely agree. We'd be talking for two years, when's Nick Dacos coming home, even if he went to the Crows? True. Or if he went to Fremantle or the West Coast Eagles. So this is a great thing, I reckon, the father-son rule. I love it. Again, some people don't like it, but this is where I think it's going to work perfectly. And now the Gold Coast have three minutes to decide who they're going to take instead. And they get pick five. So we're all, but there's already the two that have been pushed back. So tonight's draft, as it currently stands, will go to pick number 20. So for those that were in picks number 18, which was the Brisbane Lions, and picks number 19, they've been pushed out too. So they'll round out tonight's first round as well. So that's exciting. But I completely agree, Dwayne. And this is a conversation that we could have for a long time. I still love that there's something about having the same surname at your football club. We just saw it with Darcy as a third generation. We're now seeing it as a second generation at the Pies with the second son, which is, that's that's extremely exciting as well. You've got the two Dacos boys getting to play for the club that they've probably grown up at as well. And their father is a legend of that football club. So, you know what? Things aren't always fair, do I know, particularly in this game. So if you get one for sort of free, I'm okay with that as long as it's for the right reasons. 
So there's a bit of talk that the Gold Coast will go for Mac Andrew, but uh, we'll wait and see. They've still got two minutes left. Here's Nick Dacos in the meantime. Nick, congratulations. You're a Collingwood player. This must be a lifetime dream. Yeah, yeah, so surreal. And for... Got you, Sarah. Yes, with Nick Dacos here, is just taken by the Collingwood Footy Club. This must be a lifetime dream. You must be stoked. Yeah, yeah, so surreal. And for to finally for it to happen is yeah, amazing. Tell us about the influence of not just your dad, but also your brother and other family members and friends across the journey. Yeah, I've had, I've been fortunate enough to have dad, Josh, and then so many good coaches over the years, and they've really influenced me and helped me to get here today. What will it mean wearing the famous number thirty-five next year? Yeah, I'm super excited to don the thirty-five. It's obviously got um, a lot of meaning at the club with. Um, pulling out of the game and, and yeah, I'm really excited. Have you got round one penciled in your diary? Is it a bit too soon? No, I think that's way too soon. I'd just be happy to get a game next year and I'll work towards getting a game. Great attitude. Congratulations. Thank you. I spoke to Peter today and he talked about that it might be Nick's choice as to whether he keeps the 35 going forward. So like that puts too much pressure on the player. Oh, play. I don't that's, mind it. No, um, I think keep the legacy alive. What, of, of handing it, it to the new draft pick or have, keeping it in the let Dacos it, family? It, keep it in the Dacos family. I have no issue with that. So the Gold Coast pick number five is in. We'll wait for Gil McLaughlin to come to the stage as well. So Nick Dacos has been matched. Gold Here's Gil McLaughlin. Selected. Mac Andrew from the Dandenong Stingrays. As we expected, Mac Andrew has been taken by the Gold Coast and uh, there are big wraps on this kid as well. Big wraps for a big man, 200, uh, 200 centimetres, and once again, only weighing 70 kilograms. So there's still so much size for this young man to put on. They say he's an excitement machine. His vertical leap is exceptional. He's athletic. He's got clean hands for a big man. His versatility is exceptional. Now, the areas to work on, and what can you do? You're raw. You're raw because you're extremely tall for a young man and you're still trying to learn about your own body and he needs to get a little bit bigger. That's uh, that's clear, being only the 70 kilograms. Out of the Danny Nong Stingrays, Dueno, and obviously via Vic Country, but that's an exceptional pickup from the Gold Coast Suns. He can play rock. He can go key forward. You know what? Who else knows what he could grow into as well? But, jeez, he moves well for a big man. So, Ruck, they're going to have to wait a little while, obviously, with the Ruck situation for him because he is so thin. So... Jason Horn, Francis pick one, Sam Darcy pick two, Finn Callahan pick three, uh, Nick Dacos pick four, Mac Andrew pick five. Back with pick six next. Stick around. It's the AFL 2021 draft. Thanks to Type Out Live from Marvel Stadium. Introducing the all-new Staria Load, Hyundai's new commercial van loaded with as much space and tech as you can possibly fit. We fit in class-leading safety features like a 360-degree surround-view monitor in the liftback, giving you another set of eyes on the road. Plus, the two-seat van fits three Euro pallets. Right now, we've also fit in a special $750 bonus for ABN holders. The all-new Hyundai Staria Load fits in everything. T's and C's apply. Hi, it's Andrew Bensley here. The John Allen Better Home Living Spring Sale is on again. That means there's massive reductions on hundreds of items like TVs, air conditioners, fridges, washers, cooking appliances, beds and even barbecues. Plus there's free delivery. And a hot tip, they guarantee to beat any online price on stocked items across the store. Don't miss the John Allen Better Home Living Spring Sale. See the specials at johnallen.com.au. Every day, we wake up and look at ourselves in the mirror. How do you see yourself? PTP see you as confident, standing tall. PTP's new posture range makes the perfect posture accessible to anyone. Designed by world-leading professional practitioners, the range features posture mining T-shirts, braces and belts, a core seat and V backpack, all working to straighten your thoughts around posture. PTP, smarter movement, better performance. Find the posture range online at rebelsport.com and ptpfit.com. For over 40 years, Kubota's range of agricultural, construction, mowing and implement machinery has helped to shape and build Australia. Kubota's new and improved models continue to deliver outstanding quality, performance, reliability and value. Always ready to get the job done. 
Visit kubota.com.au to view the latest online catalogue or contact your local Kubota dealer for your copy today. Kubota, shaping Australia. You're listening to SEN's coverage of the 2021 NAB AFL Draft. For tyre power, draft three tyres, get your fourth tyre free on Falcon Passenger Tyres. We're live from the AFL Draft and another pick for the number, well, it's number six pick pick now, now, even though Adelaide had pick four coming in. But number six, Josh Rochelle has been taken by the Adelaide Crows. For Safety Hub, visit the safetyhub.com.au website. Visit them at 3 Cubit Way, Dandenong South, or the safetyhub.com.au. Joshua Rochelle, pick six to the Adelaide Crows. He's the Vic Country boy, the Murray Bush Rangers, who plays in a small forward or a midfielder role, so he's very capable in a couple of uh, positions of the football oval. He's 180 centimetres, Dwayne, 78 kilograms. He's got some really good strengths, and the main one is his skill level. He's really smart. He uses the ball exceptionally well in regards to his finishing, particularly in front of, uh, in front of goal. He's got a little bit of X factor as well, and you probably need that when you're probably a little bit undersized compared to some of these other guys that have gone before him. He needs to work on his consistency. Now, that's not completely unusual for, for young players, particularly at underage football, but also in their journey of being a, sen- a senior footballer and also his ability just to cover the ground, both uh, offensively and defensively. But a really good pickup and, once again, not a huge surprise. He was uh, touted to go anywhere between 6 to 12, so he's definitely hit that number as the Adelaide Crows have picked up young Josh at pick number 6. So it's Hawthorne's pick next and then Fremantle. So Hawthorne have the next pick, which is essentially um, pick 7 as it is now, even though they came into the draft with pick 5. So that's the next pick. Then Fremantle have the pick after that. Then Richmond, Fremantle again, and St Kilda. And the West Coast Eagles round out the top 10, even though it will end up being the top 12. So great to have your company wherever you might be listening around the land to the draft coverage. I understand a new audience has just joined us for the coverage, so great to have your company. Let's hear from Joshua Rochelle, the new Adelaide Crows pickup. To him today, but um, <laughs> if I'd say one player, I'd definitely say Toby. That's fantastic. Now, you had a choice between soccer and footy. We're glad to see that you've gone with with footy. What what was behind that decision? Um, I think at the end of the day, I was uh, very passionate um, in football. I loved playing both sports, but when it comes to making a, a decision, I think I was always going to go down the football pathway. Now, tell us about the impact the Shepherd and Swans have had on your development as a football and as a person? Yeah, Shepherd and Swans has been massive for me. Um, growing up there, watching my, my father and my uncles and, and my cousins go through the ranks, it's, uh, they've, they've helped me along the journey and it's been very good. What are you looking forward to most about joining the Crows? Um, I think I'm just yeah, really excited to, to go in day one, earn the respect to my teammates and, and yeah, just get stuck into things. Kicking a few goals as well? That's exactly right. I love a goal here and there. <laughs> and a few celebrations too? Yeah, well, don't, don't do anything too strenuous. Just keep it too basic. Nicely done. Well done, Josh. Thanks very much. So, well, Blighty, given his Adelaide connection, actually mm. hand the Adelaide Crows jumper to Joshua Rochelle as well while and he's that, about it. And that first question, we just missed the uh, the start of that question from Tom Morris. It was the comparison of Toby Green. Mm. So he's a mercurial forward, has drawn comparisons to Toby Green. He boasts unbelievable smarts, skills, and he also has that keen eye for goal, as we just heard. So not only will he kick the goal, but we also heard maybe a little bit of a celebration as well. Which yeah, don't you love that? Um, Blighty, by the way, not in the room. So, of course, he's not going to do it. So we're up to Hawthorne. Josh Ward has been the guy that a few people believe that Hawthorne will take. They've got another minute to make that decision. Yeah, well, the Hawks are in an interesting situation. And for the first time, Sam Mitchell gets an opportunity to have some influence on, on what the future may look like. Now, clearly, he's taking over a list. That, uh, that that ultimately wasn't his as much as he's been a part of it. It's been someone else's ultimate responsibility. But he steps in and he gets to mould this group, but in particular this uh, this draft crop that he gets to bring in. So he has a significant moment. They, they're currently holding picks five, which is the one we're about to move to, which is now seven, 21, 24, and then they go out to 59, 65, and 81. So don't expect him to use all of those picks. Do I know? They've only got 40 seconds left. But in particular, those first four picks. So seven, it'll go to 23, and it'll go to 26 as well. So three significant picks there for the Hawks, for Sam Mitchell to be able to mould his group for the first time. 
They've got nine people in the draft room, the Hawks, uh, nine people brains trust, so they have just handed their pick in to the AFL. They've done it on the deadline, so only a couple of seconds left. Let's go back to the CEO of the AFL, Gil McLaughlin, to make the announcement as to who Hawthorne have taken with pick seven. Starts now with uh, the new players, the players have already got on their list, and now you add to it with a, a top 10 draft pick as, as well. And, yeah, the expectations are high that, that come with the top 10 draft pick. But Just waiting for Gil McLaughlin to come to stage because they are out of time officially. Do I know that pick number seven, as we just touched on, for the Hawthorne Football Club? The call has gone through, yet Gil McLaughlin is yet to walk on stage and actually read out that young man's name, so we'll sit and wait. We thought they were dragging it out just for... Uh, just to make it fun. Just to make the night go a little bit longer, but the Hawks have submitted a... Pick yet, yeah, Gil McLaughlin isn't walking out just mm. yet. So that's uh, Sam Mitchell's first choice as the senior coach of the Hawthorne Football Club. So we'll wait to see the name that Gil McLaughlin picks. But just on that, Dwayne, I mean, you look at the Hawthorne list and you can critique it and you can be really critical. They've got some really good young players. We saw some growth last year from some individuals in particular. I love what Bramble did, for example, mm. off the half back line. So this is an opportunity for this club to grow and. You know, you speak about some of the most significant drafts of all time as a as a competition, but what about some of the drafts that the Hawthorne Football Club's had in the last 20-odd years and the success when they got those particular picks right? I know that the majority of those picks were in the top 10 with Lewis, Mitchell and Roughhead, but when you get it right, geez, it can impact your football club for a long time. So a pivotal moment for the Hawthorne Football Club as we sit and wait. So the pick's been in for a minute now. Well, I'm just watching. They're actually on the phone, Duano. They've just jumped on the phone. It's on loudspeaker. So you mentioned mm. about half their football club being in that room, which was absolutely spot on. There was, um, Nine no, guys. There was no social distancing in that no. particular room. They've jam-packed them in. I just wonder whether there is some form of a conversation behind closed mm. doors, which we're not privy to just yet, which means that there might be some uh, manoeuvring of particular picks. So someone else might have been jumping in for the live bid of Hawthorne's pick. So their time but elapsed, would, though. Would, That's the I'm, strange part. Yeah, but I would have thought that it needed to be notified that the time is out and that needs to be mm. documented. But no, as we currently sit here and we watch, there is a lot of people in the room and at least one, if not two, people on mobile phones on loudspeaker. So we'll, uh, we'll just sit and wait and work through what the Hawks may be doing. So you said Ward, you thought, was the possibility. Well, Young Josh, Josh Ward, Ward, the boy out of the Northern Knights. Jai Amos is another one. Uh, Josh Gibkiss has been talked about. Matthew Johnson. Uh, there's a few that believe that uh, he could be the next picked. Um, so there is a few that are in the reckoning. Here's Gil McLaughlin. I have selected Joshua Ward from the Northern Knights. So a little bit of a delay, but the guy that we expected would be taken by Hawthorne at pick seven has been taken at pick seven, Joshua Ward. And uh, a little bit of a delayed reaction for he and his family as well. They now celebrate, and it's excitement time for Josh Ward. He's a hawk. Oh, it's fantastic news. The, the boy out of the Northern Knights. So it's not a huge trip across there to uh, to Waverley Park, but it will be moving out towards Dingley in years to come. But he's a fantastic midfielder, Dwayne, 181 centimetres, so a tiny bit undersized compared to, as I mentioned, some of these other boys that have been taken before him. Still a little bit undersized in regards to his weight as well, but we know how these guys grow so quickly when they spend most of their first development years in the gym. But he's got some great endurance. Dwayne, I love what he brings to the game. Consistency. He's durable. He's got really good clean hands, which he must have for a man of his height. He's got elite decision making, and he just probably needs to work on his in, uh, his athleticism. It's probably the one area. Do I know it's not a huge issue? Hence why he's been taken pick seven. Um, but really looking forward to how he grows with this young Hawthorne group coming through and a new coach in Sam Mitchell. So this is the last. This next one is the last of the picks that most people have kind of expected it to go to this uh, particular plan. Jai Amos is a West Australian, yep. so there is a thought that Fremantle with pick six will be taking Jai Amos, but it's what happens after that that we could be up for something a little different. So we wait for Fremantle. Now they've got three and a half minutes left to decide whether Jai Amos, the local WA boy, is their guy. Yeah, well, Jai Amos is, is a, a superb size, 195 centimetres. He's a key forward, but we know how they can change anyway, so he might be able to go to the half-back line. Fremantle, similar to the clubs that we've just spoken about previous to this pick being number eight, he can grow with his group, Duano. We know what they're doing over there, and they've shown some really good signs 
They lose Chera. What can they bring in and how can they support this group? So I'm really looking forward to this. And I wouldn't be shocked if they went with a local boy. Maybe the, the Chera conversation off the back of the last mm, year. Yep. Not would have scared them off, but it probably gets you thinking once again about how do you retain your top talent. And if you've got someone from next door, then why not go for him if he's an elite player? So really looking forward to this man out of East Perth and, and clearly represented his state. If you have just joined us this hour, we're live from Marble Stadium. It's the 2021 AFL Draft. Nick D'Alcetto and I. And just to recap what's happened so far, North Melbourne took Jason Horn francis with pick one. Pick two, the Giants read out Sam Darcy's name. The Bulldogs then matched it. So pick two was Sam Darcy going to the Dogs. Pick three, the Giants had the next pick, obviously, given that they had that pick of Sam Darcy taken away from them. They chose Finn Callahan. And then it was over to um, the Gold Coast. They read out Nick Dacos's name. Collingwood matched that bid, so pick four. Nick Dacos went to Collingwood. Gold Coast then had to go again. They chose Mac Andrew. Let's go to Josh Ward. Josh, how's it sitting with you now? Yeah, it's unbelievable. I can't believe it. And, um, yeah, so happy to, to get to the Hawks and can't wait to get started. How nervous were you for those three or four minutes where you were waiting? Yeah, oh, shocking. I don't know. I don't know what was... Had no idea what was happening, but, um, yeah, eventually name got called out and, uh, yeah, incredible feeling. Tell us your history with Hawthorne, your family history. Yeah, so great-grandpa played 32 games for the Hawks and... Um, yeah, he's the reason, I guess, the whole family barracks for them. And, yeah, it means a lot to go there. Um, family would be happy they don't have to buy any more uh, merch for any other club now. So, um, yeah, no, nah, it's incredible. Who was your favourite player growing up? Maybe Sam Mitchell? Yeah, I should probably say Sam Mitchell, shouldn't I? I don't know. No, a lot of them. Um, Sam Mitchell, Luke Hodge, you know, the uh, list goes on. But, um, yeah. Now, you missed out on the AFL Academy at the start of the year. How did you deal with this setback and uh, get yourself back in the mix for a top 10 selection? Yeah, I guess... I- yeah, I thought I'd be in the mix for that position, but, um, oh, I guess, yeah, um, yeah, wasn't quite up there yet, and I just used that as a bit of, bit of motivation to um, really kickstart my way into the year, and, um, yeah, it all, all worked out well. Congratulations, Josh. Cheers, Tom. We just heard an interesting story, Joanna, just to jump in there. So that's a young man that 12 months ago or 24 months ago wasn't considered in the best 30 plays in the country for his age group, and within a short period of time... He's been taken to pick seven, so considered the seventh best player in the competition. It's an amazing thing. As we go to pick, uh, the pick is in, sorry, for the Frio Dockers at number eight. And they did take, we understand, Josh Amos. A little bit of a delay on that, but uh, Jai Amos, I should say, has been chosen by Fremantle. That's the pick they got through Carlton. So pick eight, Jai Amos will go to the Fremantle Footy Club, the local boy, as we expected. Yeah, as we did expect. We spoke about uh, Josh Ward only going around the corner. This is a young man that gets to stay at home and stay in his own state and play for the Frio Dockers as they move forward. And what he brings to the game or what he could bring at senior level is exactly what they're after. The ability to work in with the other key forwards. And he's clearly not at that level just yet. Dwayne, he's only 85 kilograms, which is undersized for a man of 195 centimetres. But he's got elite leading patterns. What that sees, says to me is he sees the game really well. He knows where the dangerous space is and he can get into those particular areas and make it as easy as possible for that person with ball in hand up the field. He's a great mark. He kicks goals. He's really consistent, as I touched on before. Not always the strength of, of young men, but he's really consistent and he's got a, uh, a huge ability to develop with where he currently sits and what he could possibly be. So all of those things to put together, it's a great pick by the Freo Dockers. So Richmond have the next pick and here is where it gets interesting. It's gone to plan. It's gone as most people expected to this point. Yep. So then it's Richmond. Let's first hear from Jai Amos. And you're a free man with Docker. How exciting is that for you and the family? Um, it's such, such a surreal feeling. Like, um, <laughs> I don't have words at the moment, but um, yeah, I'm just so excited. Um, thanks to Freo for the opportunity. Um, like I said, any opportunity at this level to train and play, um, yeah, it's always been a dream. So, And the guys just mentioned on the broadcast there that uh, you have done a fair bit of travel over the last few years. I mean, we've seen you since you were 14, 15 years of age with the Southwest Academy. Surely a move from Bustleton's on the cards because uh, 200k is a long way away from Perth, mate. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, it's been been a massive year for travel. Um, yeah, at the start of the year, sort of um, get, getting yourself through it at the start, and then sort of by the end of the year, um, a sort of thing you had to do um, each, each, each weekend. So um, yeah, I was glad I got through the year. Well, congratulations, mate. All the best uh, on the future career at AFL level. And uh, the Freo Dockers have certainly got an outstanding forward and a fantastic young man. Well done. Thank you very much.
Uh, Joy Amos has gone to Fremantle. So, Richmond have the next pick. It's pick nine. They came into the draft with pick seven, but obviously there's been a couple of bids for Sam Darcy and Nick Dacos, so they now have pick nine, essentially. And Cal Toomey in the Phantom draft has felt, thought that Josh Gibkiss yes. is the man that they will take, but this we talked about it a bit. We expected it to go to this point with Jai Amos, the local guy to Fremantle. Richmond could pull the first surprise of the night here. Well, as you mentioned, it's probably the first time that we're not quite sure what they do for here, from here. Now, all clubs are able to assess this, and once again, we touched on this earlier, they play out so many scenarios, and they would have known ultimately that Dacos and Darcy were going to get nominated. In what particular order, they weren't quite sure, but it made no difference knowing that those bids were going to be matched. But this is where it gets interesting. So Richmond with an opportunity with one minute and 50-odd seconds to go to, to maybe change the dynamic of this draft at this stage, which will actually have a domino effect for those clubs after them. So, But first of all, on, on that previous pick for Jai Amos, I think it's fantastic with, with what he can do. Clearly he has to move home. It's a big state, WA. I know you don't want to be driving 200 kilometres each way <laughs> to, uh, to play football every, every single day, but his hands are elite. And he also led the Colts in the waffle competition with 51 goals. So a man that finishes off his good work. So, North Melbourne, pick one, Jason Horn francis uh, Pick two, Sam Darcy to the Dogs. Pick three, Finn Callahan to the Giants. Pick four, Nick Dacos to Collingwood. Pick five, Mac Andrew to the Gold Coast. Pick six, Josh Rochelle to the Adelaide Crows. Pick seven, Josh Ward to Hawthorne. Pick eight, Jai Amos to Fremantle. And now pick nine, Richmond is about to hand it in to AFL boss Gil McLaughlin. They're still on the phone a bit. They've got a big crew as well. They've got a crew of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They're all trying to take credit for their recent success. This is an opportunity for them to get their face on camera. Do I know, do, do, no Damien Harbick amongst the team, though. So ten people team with no Damien Harbick. Brendan Gale is overseeing it as we speak. Interesting. There are 38 seconds to go. Have you got them in contention to win the flag in 2022, just quickly? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I think okay. they've still got uh, a good enough core of yep. player. And I think they're in the mix of, you know, seven or eight teams below Melbourne, who I think, obviously, the Premiers, yes. as it stands right now, are probably the front runners, and the bookies probably believe so too. But, no, Richmond's well and truly in the reckoning yeah, to me. bring in Robbie Tarrant as well. Get back a healthy, dusty man. You never know your luck. So pick number nine is in. We'll wait for Gil McLaughlin to take the stage and announce who the Tigers are going to take in the 2021 20, National pick nine, Draft. the Richmond Football Club have selected... Joshua Gibkiss from the Greater Western Victoria Rebels. So they didn't throw a variable in. They went with the guy that uh, a lot of people thought would go to Richmond with their pick nine. And Kautumi in the Phantom Draft said that that would happen as well. Fremantle, by the way, have the next pick. And uh, the thought is that Matthew Johnson might be their next pick as well. But for now, it's Fremantle and Josh Gibkiss, uh, Gibkiss who is getting the hugs from the family and uh, they're all rising and getting together and celebrating, which is great to see. And what I love about this, this is a contingency or a plan for the future. So Gibkiss is a key defender. He's 196 centimetres. Dwayne, when you look at their back line in particular, as I just mentioned, they brought in Robbie Tarrant. They've had a couple of senior players leave that back line over recent years. But this is a great move in regards to what does your future look like? How do you lock down a key defender role? As I always say, these young men can play both ends of the ground. He might start as a defender, learn his craft, and there might be a time that they ask him to go forward. So he's got all the tricks. He's versatile. He's got the great intercept marking. He's great at that closing speed, which we know is demanded at the, at the top level. He's got really clean hands for a big man. Good composure, which I also mm. love from a big player as well, Dueno. can always work on his kicking, um, but there's so much upside for this young man. I really like this pick coming out of uh, the, the Rebels and also coming through Vic Country. So Fremantle have the next pick to round out the top ten. We'll take a quick break and be back with the tenth pick in the 2021 AFL Draft. We're live from Marble Stadium for tyre power. At ENS, we're proud to stock Westinghouse ovens, cooktops, fridges and dishwashers and have done so for over 50 years. Built in Adelaide, Westinghouse ovens in stunning black stainless steel come with unbelievable features like air fry, steam assisted cooking and pyro clean self cleaning. ENS has a massive range of Westinghouse appliances and our staff are Westinghouse experts and we won't be beaten on price. So visit one of our nine showrooms today or shop online and get the ENS feeling 
with Westinghouse. Tab Queensland Summer Racing Carnival has finally arrived. With more than $20 million in prize money and bonuses, Australia's most exciting summer racing carnival continues at the Gold Coast with the Tattersalls Race Day this Saturday. Don't miss a single minute of the on-course action, including the recognition stakes. Visit queenslandsummercarnival.com.au for more. Gamble responsibly. If gambling becomes an issue, call 1-800-858-858. Stay in pole position this week with radio's number one motorsport show, The Driver's Seat with Matt McKeldin and Stephen Johnson. Stadium Super Trucks boss Nathan Kayser reveals the real Barry Ryan. People misunderstand Barry. You know, we see him for the guy that swears on TV and does that sort of stuff, but he's an incredible bloke. Last time we spoke to Barry Ryan on this show, I think he was watching Maths. Um, you, you think that's a joke? That's not a that's joke. That's dead serious. <laughs> yeah, that was dead serious. <laughs> Download the Driver's Seat app to listen now. The new Kia Niro Hybrid SUV has landed. It combines a smooth and efficient blend of petrol and electric power without the need for external charging. It's a no-compromise SUV with outstanding fuel economy, low emissions, tons of comfort and impressive versatility. The new Kia Niro Hybrid SUV. Available for immediate delivery. Check with your local Kia dealer for details. Kia. Movement that inspires. You're listening to SEN's coverage of the 2021 NAB AFL Draft. For tyre power, draft three tyres, get your fourth tyre free on Falcon Passenger Tyres. Here's Gil McLaughlin. Neil Erasmus from Subiaco. So they've taken the local Neil Erasmus Fremantle with pick 10. So that is a slight change up, but it is to be expected. Fremantle have grabbed Neil Erasmus. And that's pick 10 in the AFL draft done. The top 10 is over. You speak about a, a local boy, a boy out of Subiaco as well, a midfielder, 190 centimetres. So there's your modern midfielder, a man with height who's got the ability to find plenty of the football. has never been an issue. He's really consistent. He's got great endurance. He takes an overhead grab for a big fella, and he also hits the scoreboard as well. So the Freo picks, their last two picks, or their picks number eight and now picks number 10, they've gone with two local boys. So the... The threat, I guess, Dwayne, of having even the conversation about it, well, how long will they stick around for? Those days are gone. That, uh, that's a really good pickup. So they've got two local boys that will be uh, playing football at Fremantle next year. So now it's up to St Kilda with pick nine, then the West Coast pick 10, Essendon have pick 11, Port Adelaide pick 12, the Giants pick 13. Well, essentially, um, sorry, uh, they're two picks further on. So the Giants pick 15, Brisbane um, pick 16, Richmond pick 17, Sydney pick 18, Melbourne pick 19 and Brisbane pick 20. So the next few picks, Saints, West Coast, Essendon, Port, Giants, Brisbane, Richmond again, Sydney, Melbourne and Brisbane. And that will round out the top 20. Here's Neil Erasmus. You get to join your uh, State Academy teammate, Jai Amos, in staying in Perth. Obviously keeps mum and dad pretty happy. Yeah, it's just unreal really. Um... I've grown up in the Eagles support, I'm not going to lie, but, yeah, I'm so keen to get, get started at the Dockers. Um, yeah, uh, it's unreal, like, the feeling. Um, yeah, I'm so stoked. Made a big couple of years for you. You played in a premiership as a 17-year-old with Subiaco and obviously progressed from a, a half-forward type into the midfield. Who did you model your game on? Uh, I haven't been able to single out one sort of player, but, yeah, uh, over the years, sort of Jack Steele, um, maybe Elliot Yo. Um, but, yeah, more recently, um, Petrarca or Fife, someone like that. Um, yeah, there's a few. Um, yeah. And Simon Gullick, mate, announced during the week that uh, there's a four-year plan to win a, a premiership at Frio. So something that you'll be aiming towards in terms of, of trying to crack into that senior team early? Yeah, there's no hiding. Um, Frio's got a really good um, young group coming through. So, yeah, I, I'm really excited to um, get started with, with, with those boys. And, yeah, I know a few boys there. And, yeah, I can't wait. Congratulations, mate, and all the best for the future. Thank you very much. Cheers. Big round of applause for the locals as well. Neil Erasmus to Fremantle with pick 10. Is there a go-home factor within WA? Is this a chance to go home well, to the West Coast Eagles to be back for? <laughs> we, we have a little bit of fun. We're just talking about the haircuts. All the boys are rocking the stylish mullet. So it's gone the mullet with just uh, with a little bit of polish on top. But now, now we're starting to see a couple of comments which may come back to haunt them at some stage. Just to openly say, well, I was a uh, an Eagles supporter. No, I don't think that's a, a huge concern. But uh, once again, a, a really good pickup. And and what I love is when they ask a question like that to say, well, how, who do you model your game on? 
He's modelled himself off the best, and so you should. So if he sees a, a glimmer of himself in those players that he mentioned, Elliot Yo, Jack Steele, I mean, there's a handful of those guys. If you can be half as good as them, life's going to be okay at senior level, Dwayne. So really well done to the Frio Dockers. They get uh, pick number eight. And then they roll straight into pick number 10 as well. So two local boys about to play some good, serious football for their football club. So any insight into who the Saints are going to pick, Nick? No, I don't. I honestly don't know that. And, and you wouldn't tell me if you did, no, but that would be no, fair. Well, I'd no, accept well, that. No, I don't know. Dwayne. Had to ask it's, the question. Well, the young, I'm just looking at young Ben Hobbs, who, who hasn't been picked yet. He was uh, predicted to go around pick oh, six. Yes. So he could quite possibly have slipped through. He's a midfielder, 183 centimetres, coming out of Ballarat's... Uh, Here it is. From Glenelg. Well so from Glenelg, the oh, they, they have, have taken Nasaya Wanganeen Malera. How's that for a name? That's a very, very good name. And my favourite player growing up was Gavin Wanganeen. So I really love that surname. And then there's uh, there was a Malera at St. Curate as well when I was there for a short period of time. Mm. Dwayne are going back quite a while. So you, you look at this young man and what he's, uh, what he's capable of. That's really exciting. And it's really important for St Kilda to get this pick right. Um, they took a little bit of a dip last year in regards to their form and their ladder position. And they need to get these picks right to work their way back up the ladder. So I think they'll be uh, really pleased that they've got uh, this young man into their football club. So he's played some senior footy as well, which uh, I understand is going to hold him in good stead. Um, he's, he's fairly lightly framed. But he has played against men a couple of times, I'm told. And I Wanganeen Malera going to the Saints with pick 11. So over to the West Coast Eagles, their first pick in the 2021 draft coming up. They're about to load up with pick 12 and they're on the clock. They've got four minutes left. Well, this will be, uh, once again, this is where, we, where it becomes really difficult to pick. So we're trying to work through, once again, the name that I was mentioning, apologising uh, to Gil McLaughlin for probably speaking over him just a little bit there for St Kilda's pick, but it's been Hobbs that slipped through. Yeah. So predicted to be uh, around the pick six. So we're now currently sitting at pick 12 with the West Coast Eagles with three minutes and 40 seconds on the clock for them to... Uh, to name their player. And I'm just looking at Ben Hobbs and, and what he's um, being compared to or the style of player that he is coming out of uh, Vic Country through the Ballarat uh, Rebels, and it's Taylor Adams. Mm. So it's that bullish, hard-nosed inside midfielder. <laughs> Here is Nasiah Wanganeen Malera. Draft tonight. Uh, how are you feeling yourself? It, it must have been a really nervous wait. Had you spoken to St Kilda? Uh, yeah, it was pretty nervous, um, but yeah, I spoke to them yesterday, um, but yeah, it's pretty surreal. Um, get to go to St Kilda, obviously familiar with, uh, with them, um, obviously Dad played there uh, a little bit, but yeah. Besides, so what have you learned from playing? You played reserve grade footy, you got the call up after consistent footy to play some senior footy as well. What have you learned from those experiences? Um, yeah, I learned a lot from um, my experiences, I think. Um, the reserves level helped me um, just like getting used to um, big bodies and then um, obviously to step up to the league um, getting used to um, bigger bodies there and um, a lot fat, fast um, pace game and I think that gave me a lot of confidence heading into the national championships. You're one of the best kicks in this draft pool, is it something you've always been good at? Is it something you always practised as a youngster? Um, oh yeah, Dad and um, you know Mum and uh, all my family members always used to tell me just to practice kicking on my right and left. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I didn't really uh, notice of how good of a kick I was. Um, I'm just still, I think it was the second half of this year. Awesome advice, kicking both sides <laughs> of the body. And Nasaya, we are so excited to see what you can do in your football career. Well done on tonight's drafting, and we look forward to a really bright footy future. Uh, no worries, thank you. Nasaya Wanganeen Malera to St Kilda with pick 11. And West Coast Eagles, we're watching Adam Simpson at the moment, have a bit of a chat. Seems as if they're maybe not 100% sure who they're going to grab right now with a minute and 30 seconds left. Well, they might be a little bit disappointed. They thought they were about to get a man that was a, a supporter of their football club and he went next door to the mm. Frio Dockers in Young Neil. But uh, that's a great pick-up for the Saints. You speak about what... Uh, Wanganeen Malira can bring to the game. It's that outside run and that ball use, as we just heard through Fox Football as well. So exactly what the Saints are after with one minute and ten seconds on the clock for Port Adelaide. We'll wait so to West Coast Eagles. Oh, sorry, West Coast yep. Eagles. Apologies. But I think you're right. I reckon they would have thought that they were going to be able to grab Neil Erasmus, local WA boy, West Coast Eagles fan. So they probably thought that he was going to be a chance to be theirs, but it hasn't panned out that way. He's gone to Fremantle. 
So now we're waiting to see what the West Coast Eagles do. It looks like they have decided uh, on what they do. Although we're seeing Port Adelaide, are they going to now well, throw up a, a bid to try and move up the well, draft they order? Have. They have. Okay, so Port Adelaide has moved up the draft order. And because the West Coast Eagles probably can't get their man, here's Gil McLaughlin. From the Sandy Dragons. Congratulations so Port to Joshua from the Sandy Dragons have decided, or Port Adelaide's decided to grab West Coast Eagles pick and take Joshua Sin. So Port, were, I think Port were thinking of taking him anyway, uh, but they are still a couple of picks away. So Port maybe thought, well, Essendon might take him ahead of us. Mm. West Coast might take him ahead of us. We better jump up the draft order and get the guy that we wanted, and we are a chance to get the West Coast Eagles pick because they can't get their man, Neil Erasmus, who was maybe stolen from them by Freo. Well, this is where the live picks come in, and this is where it's important to stay on top of your game. Do I know they would change? And you could see the names flicking over just a matter of time before we could get confirmation ex exactly why Port Adelaide were in shot. But they have taken that young Joshua Sin. He's going to Port Adelaide. A man that's 186 centimetres, so I'll continue to say it until the cows come home. A tall midfielder. He's a good size already at 82 kilograms coming out of the Sandy Dragons, who we've spoken about multiple times. But that's a man that I think, do I know you look at it, you think Port, they were keen on this. They knew exactly the move that they had to make, depending on the right timing. And then they've ultimately got their man. He's got speed. He can run and carry the football. He's a left foot kick. He's got the penetration within that kick. Reads the play really well. Um, and just probably needs to work on his composure. He's just one speed. He just loves to get it and go. But that's a really good starting point for a young man that uh, is going to come into a team that's been pretty successful for the last few years. And a clever move by Port, do you think, given that they wanted Josh Sin, but they did now sense the fact that the West Coast Eagles or Essendon could grab him and they'll yep. end up with someone that they didn't necessarily want, mm -hmm. even though they would have taken. So the live trading has allowed them to jump up the draft order and make sure they get the guy they're well, after. This is where I'd love to go into the understanding, and I guess, the war room of these clubs that are playing out all of these scenarios. That was done in, in a split second, do I know? So you could only assume that this was a premeditated move, that if that scenario was to play out and ultimately Fremantle weren't going to get we were going to take the men that they thought they were ready to strike and they did it at the perfect timing. It happened in the last 20 to 30 seconds. It was late. Mm. They came hard and they got the job done. So West Coast moved down the draft order two spots, but they get a little compensation later in the draft yes. from Port Adelaide who had to do that pick swap to make sure that they got Josh Sin to Port Adelaide. The pick Port Adelaide got from Sydney in that shuffle around. So now it's up to Essendon with pick 13 in the draft. Essendon now have the next choice. And they've got two and a half minutes to decide if they go for Ben Hobbs or somebody else. Matthew Johnson was thought he might go earlier. He wasn't taken. Let's have a listen to what Josh Sin has to say. I really can't describe how I feel at the moment. So what are you looking forward to most about getting to Port and getting your, getting stuck into the game? Um, I think just what Ken Hinckley's been able to do with such like a young group. They're heading in such a, a really special direction. It's something I'm so excited to be a part of. And um, I already know a couple of the players. And I'm really excited to work alongside players like Zach Butters, Ollie Wines, just to name a few. <laughs> just a Brownlow medalist, if you don't mind. What sort of player are you for those who haven't seen you? Uh, I'm a bit of a running uh, running type of player. I think I can play through the midfield um, and even off half back as well. So I think that's one of my greatest strengths to be able to play multiple positions. And you're a twin as well. Yeah, I am. I've got my twin sister out there who's been, um, yeah, a huge help for me just particularly this year as we both, I guess, matured a bit. So, um, yeah, Chloe's been awesome help. Congratulations. Look forward to seeing you play. Thank you very much. So Josh Sin, he might be playing, well, might have played for the Sandy Dragons, but knew a lot about Port Adelaide. I think they probably had a few conversations yeah. with him over time. That's how you know a lot about a club that uh, you haven't been allowed to travel to for roughly two years, Dwayne. That the conversations, uh, Jason Cripps is, I think he's titled their list manager, who lives literally around the corner. He's yep. based out of Sandringham, so or actually he might be out of Hampton. So Here's Gil McLaughlin. Benjamin Hobbs from the Greater Western Victoria Rebels. So Essendon have taken Ben Hobbs with their pick, which is pick 13 in the draft. The West Coast Eagles will be next. Ben Hobbs heading to Essendon, back with the continuation of the 2021 AFL draft. Stick around. We're live from Marble Stadium for tyre power, the number one draft pick for tyre safety and protecting you on the road.
G'day guys, Jacob Wiedering here from the Carlton Football Club. I'm proud to announce that I've joined the team at Fentry Gully Hyundai and can't wait to get stuck in. Starting with the Staria load, it has the space and technology for tradies, whilst the all-new Staria van represents luxury for the whole family. Both come with radar crews, Apple CarPlay and more and are available for immediate delivery at Fentry Gully Hyundai. Check out Fentry Gully Hyundai, Australia's number one Hyundai dealer. FentryGullyHyundai.com.au LMCT 11061 Red Energy recently won the 2021 CanStar Blue Award for Most Trusted Energy Provider. Being trusted by our customers means the world to us because at Red Energy, we're 100% Australian owned and based right here in Victoria. You'll deal one-on-one with a local who fully understands your needs and what's more, knows where Melbourne is. So call 131 806 and find out why being a customer of ours means there's no place like red. Hi, it's Rob Sanusa from State Transport and Warehousing. Do you have a commercial vehicle and looking for a better standard of work? Then call State Transport today. We have work for one and two ton trays and vans, 12 and 14 ton tort liners, right through to semi-trailers. So, make the move to a better way of transport. Call our team today. 9 587 4433. At State Transport, our people are your solution. Hi, it's Rob Walker. Here's what some happy clients are saying about AR Property Investments. When we came in, I thought, oh yeah, I don't really want to hear a sales pitch. But the way Rob explained the process just made so much sense. He really puts that his own um, passion into it. Everything Rob told us about AR Property and Property Investment has come to fruition since then. Property Investment is more affordable than you think. Book your free one-on-one education appointment today. Visit arpropertyinvestments.com.au. You're listening to SEN's coverage of the 2021 NAB AFL Draft. For tyre power, draft three tyres, get your fourth tyre free on Falcon Passenger Tyres. And here's Ben Hobbs, just been chosen by Essendon. Um, They're an amazing club and I can't wait to get into it. What are you looking forward to most? Oh, just getting started. Um, As I said, an amazing club. I'm so proud of this moment. Did you have any idea that the Bombers were keen and would take you with pick 13? Um, I got a call, um, yeah, this afternoon and just said if you're there, um, it could happen. So, yeah, I'm so happy that it's yeah, happened. So you kicked four goals in a grand final for Horsham as a 15-year-old. Do you feel like this has been a long time coming? Has it been a dream of yours? Oh, it's been a dream for as long as I can remember. And, um, yeah, it's the best day of my life for sure. <laughs> what about the influence of your dad on your career and your life? Well, Dad's an Eston supporter, so it's worked perfectly. Um, yeah, my parents and my family and my mates um, and my girlfriend have been amazing this year and can't thank my family enough. I'm stoked for you. Good luck. Thank you. He was so happy he was shaking. He was so happy when and he was crying. Picked. Yeah. He got the tears were flowing, and rightly so. It's an emotional game, Duano, and as he touched on, it's not just him. This is, this is family as well, so that, that's, that's really special. So Ben Rudden... And all the staff at the Bombers that have um, made some really big steps forward in the last 12 or so months. We speak about the making finals for the mm. first time in a long time. We know they ultimately didn't win that game against the Western Bulldogs in Tasmania. But this is a club that, that's building and you bring in another young man with good talent. And what he can offer this group is uh, he's, he's about six foot, an inside midfielder. That's exactly what they need at the moment. And it sounds like they're bringing in guys who want to be there, Essendon, which is great. Here's the West Coast Eagles pick. Here's Gil McLaughlin. Here we go. With pick 14, the West Coast Eagles have selected Campbell Chesser from the Sandrahan Dragons. And I think that is a surprise. So they were the ones that we thought uh, probably had Neil Erasmus on their radar with pick 12. They ended up trading pick 12 to Port Adelaide and moving to pick 14. And they've taken Campbell Chesser with pick 14. So over to you, Nick D'Alfano. He wasn't in my top, more, he wasn't in the top 20 that I was given that might go tonight. Well, he's first of all, he's out of the Sandy Ham, Sandringham Dragon. So you speak about, you know, building a list and, and having some really good plays in your program. And off the top of my head, is that number three or four already in the, in the top 14 picks? Yeah. So they must be doing something right down there at Sandringham. So congratulations to them as a NAB league, as a NAB club to start with. But this is a young man, 186 centimetres. He's going to be heading to the West Coast Eagles. And this is where we talk about these things behind the scenes. And it may take us a day or so to work through those scenarios about what exactly Adam Simpson and the staff saw there to to move out that Mm. pick to Port Adelaide a couple of picks earlier. They'll get something on the way back. We'll work through that at, at the right time. But... 
the West Coast Eagles, who I think we all accept need to bounce back and clearly need to look towards the future. Um, the West Coast Eagles pit holding picks 10, which was the one we just had then, which was 12, 29, 35, and then they go out to 68 and 86. So this might be the start of the next generation for this football club as a few of those players start to get towards the back end of their career, Dwayne. So we're told that he played just five games across the last two seasons due to COVID and injuries, Campbell Chesser. Five games in two years. Must have been a good five games. Must Let's have been a like really, really Must have good. been a really... But he's got speed. Yep. I mean, he kicks the ball really well. He's got class. He's versatile in regards to where he can play. He's also got that outside run. So you think about the multiple positions that he could play, let alone in one game, but, but across his career. I mean, that versatility just allows him to uh, just to do whatever it takes. So that's a nice pickup. The young man from Sandringham's got to head to the other side of the country and play for the West Coast Eagles. And how many centimetres did you say he's he He's 186. 186. Okay, so not six quite one. 200. No. Yeah, 186. Okay, 6'1". Yeah. Okay. Um, so just going through it again, where the Giants are the next pick. So they've got pick 15, the Giants just running through. The draft as it is right now for 2021, if you're joining us for the first time. North Melbourne would pick one, took Jason Horn francis uh, Pick two was the Bulldogs grabbing Sam Darcy when they had to match the Giants' bid. Pick three, Finn Callahan went to the Giants. Pick four, Nick Dacos had to match the Gold Coast offer to grab Nick. So the pick four ended up being Collingwood's pick. Nick Dacos, Gold Coast then took Mac Andrew. Pick five, Adelaide pick, pick six took Josh Rochelle. Hawthorne pick seven, Josh Ward. Fremantle pick eight, Jai Amos, the local from WA. Richmond pick nine, Josh Gibkus. Fremantle pick ten went for the local Neil Erasmus, who we think the West Coast Eagles wanted to get two picks later. St Kilda pick 11, Nasiah Wanganin Malera. Pick 12, Port Adelaide moved up in the draft to grab their guy, Josh Sin. So they did some live trading, Port Adelaide, to grab pick 12. Pick 13, Essen and Ben Hobbs. Pick 14, West Coast Eagles, Campbell Chesser. And now it's over to the Giants, who have pick 15 in the draft. And then we'll round out, essentially, the top 20 tonight. So Giants next. Then all we've got remaining tonight, Brisbane, Richmond, Sydney, Melbourne, and Brisbane. So the Giants pick is in. Let's have a listen to Gil McLaughlin to announce that pick. Um, to have done enough, really. In fact, we're hearing a little bit more um, of yeah. Campbell Chesser before Gil. So Gil's just on hold on the podium as Fox Footy wrap up this interview. I had Campbell Chesser in the top 25. Do I know? So you okay. talk about one that was just outside what we all thought was pretty much a lock. He ultimately goes pick number 14, Campbell Chesser. So they say he plays a little bit like a Hunter Clark from the St Kilda Footy Club. So that... Nice, smooth, moving, good ball user. So a good pick up there for the West Coast Eagles. With so pick the Giants 15, their pick GWS kill? Giants have selected Leek Alia from Central District. So Central District's Leek Alia, another South Australian drafted for the Safety Hub. Visit the safetyhub.com.au. Visit Safety Hub at 3 Cubit Way, Dandenong South, or the Safety Hub. .com.au. The Giants have taken Leek Alia, who has got a fantastic vertical leap and a huge upside again, Nick Dalsanter. Absolutely. Speak about a Leek. He's an enormous jump. So his vertical leap was exceptional. He's great intercept mark. He's marking in general. He's been really good. The one area of his game that he can add to, Dwayne, a lot like these style of players, is his attack. So his ability to join in when the ball is turned over on that half back line. We're going to compare him to someone like a Tom Barras from the mm -hmm. West Coast Eagles, so that ability to be that real strong lockdown defender, but as I just touched on, as his game evolves, he'll have the ability to also join in as a attacking threat as well. So Leek Aliyah taken by the Giants. So a couple of these guys will be able to sleep well tonight. Nick, they're well. getting picked up late. They don't have to worry as to who they're going to tomorrow. He's from Anglevale in SA, and it's great that he's now found a new home. He's going to have to move state, though, and go to the Giants Leek Aliyah. So next is Brisbane. And then Richmond, Sydney, Melbourne, and uh, Brisbane again. And the Lions pick is in. Let's go back to Gil McLaughlin, who's about to tell us who the Brisbane Lions, and their pick is in early. So they have obviously grabbed who they wanted to grab. Here's Gil. With pick 16, the Brisbane Lions have selected Darcy Wilmot from the Northern Knights. So Darcy Wilmot, there was talk that Brisbane would take Darcy Wilmot pre this draft, and uh, a few other guys 
in the meantime weren't picked, but they still grabbed the guy they were after right from the outset. The word was out that that's who they wanted. And what about the celebration? He's been mobbed. Nick? He's absolutely been mobbed. So he is not at any venue. The young man from the Northern Knights. He's not at the London Tavern with uh, the rest of the predicted uh, draftees tonight. He's at home. And he's somewhere at the bottom of a, of a stacks on. He has been absolutely <laughs> mobbed, ambushed by his whole family and a handful of friends that are just roughing him up, which you'll get a lot of in the next 10 to 15 years of his football career. But so when really we do his opening game of his career, we'll be showing that vision on Fox Footy. We'll yep. be... We'll be talking about that vision for a long time. Now, can, well, let's hope he hasn't hurt himself. I on the can almost of that. guarantee you that his mates were only doing that to get a little bit of moment of uh, of air time as well. So he's a really good runner, Dwayne. He's got the speed. He runs and carries with the football in hand. Reads the play once again is at 183 centimeters. You need to read the play really well. Geez, he's tough. He uses his voice in regards to his instruction. He's a really good leader can work on his craft, but when you run and carry and take the game on like that, you can almost sacrifice a little bit of that composure, allow other people to do that. You get on the outside and you just take the game on as much as you can, the young man out of the Northern Knights. That's a good, good pick-up for the Brisbane Lions. He's headed north. Absolutely. So Sam Butler, ex, he's now at the Saints, obviously, ex-Richmond, but his brother uh, is Sam Butler, I should say. So Sam Butler could end up going to the club that his brother started at, yes. Richmond. Yes, that would be an interesting story, wouldn't it? Mm. To put that all back into into those pieces. So the Tigers are on the clock. They've got three minutes and 30 seconds left. And we're quickly working our way through. It felt like the first bit, there was a little bit going on in regards to the first six or so picks, even though we felt like they were guaranteed mm. that we knew who they were going to be. But as we've got to uh, probably outside pick 10, they're sort of moving through it. And we're gonna, can we get to Darcy right now and, and get this interview from his lounge room with his mob of mates behind him? Yeah, I've got it. Uh, oh, I've just got the best player, best mate for any. Can we? Um, yeah, that's just about it. <laughs> Darcy, if you if you play round one next year, I think you're gonna have to ask the the footy club for about fifty tickets going on. What we what we just saw then? <laughs> uh, I about a hundred people. For I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. Darcy, you, you, you stole the play. You, you can play both roles. You can you can lock down. You can you can be attacking as as well. What do you think you you, you bring straight to this AFL environment? Oh, just everything you just said. Then, um, just my best footy I'll bring and uh, hard work and determination. Just everything I've got in me, I'll just I'll bring it to the AFL. Have Oh, what's, the, what's the plan for the rest of the evening, Darcy? Have you got um, a few celebrations in store? Uh, I'm more Pepsi Max in. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Just having a couple of boys in the family and stuff, so. Well, Darcy, you've certainly uh, earned a celebration tonight. We're so, so incredibly thrilled for you, and we look forward to uh, speaking to you over what's hopefully a really long footy career. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's the highlight of the night. My new favourite. As simple as that. He is this year's Jack Higgins. He's just got character. <laughs> you need to see that vision. So if you're listening to us, go out of your way to find the footage of young Darcy Wilmot, who's got a mob of mates behind him that are all having their 15 seconds of fame. And as he's answering one of the questions about what he's going to bring to, to AFL football, I'm just going to give it everything that I've got. I'm going to have a crack. He's got a mate beside him going with a beer in hand going, oh, 100%, mate, 100%. So and that's what, what you need. You need moments like that and mates like that to, uh, to put it all in perspective. And the cleverness of his answer, whether he's going to celebrate with his mates, he said, no, I'm going to have one more Pepsi Max and that's it. And he's getting some nice embraces. So there is some parents there. I thought it was going to be just a house party, but there is some adults in the building as well. So that's a really good moment for Darcy Wilmot. I look forward to tracking him because I will remember this moment sitting here with you, Dwayno, and you, Benny, and saying, remember that kid that was carrying on a little mm. bit on draft night? Now look at him. He's flying around. That is a great moment. Uh, that is fantastic. That's what you love. Plenty of passion. So over to you, Richmond. Pick 17. Will they take Dan Butler's brother, Sam Butler, or have they got something else in store for us? They've got 35 seconds left to make a decision. So we're waiting on Richmond. Pick 17 coming up in the 2021 AFL draft. And the pick is in his gill. I can see that uh, it was very uncertain what might happen at the back end of this, uh, mm. this first round. Uh, and there's been some swings and, uh, and roundabouts already. So, uh, yep, the pick is in. With pick 17, Richmond have selected 
Tom Brown from the Murray Bush Rangers. So Tom Brown has been chosen by Richmond with pick 17. And he'll be another one that'll slip well tonight. He's not going to slip to tomorrow's draft. He's been taken in the top 17. Yeah, another Murray's Bush Ranger boy. He's a good height, 186 centimetres, so a good genuine midfielder. And yeah, there's also part of it, Jonah, that you've touched on. It's also just the relief that they don't have to wait another 24 hours. Now, young Tom Brown was going to know, well, would have known that he was going to get picked up. It was just a matter of when and by who. Mm. But he gets to rest easy tonight. He can celebrate with family and friends as a Murray Bush Rangers boy. He can do it the country way. And then uh, tomorrow he can get down to business. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he's on deck tomorrow meeting a few people at the football club. He brings great speed. He's athletic. He can uh, rebounds really strongly off the half-back line. Reads the football really well, Duano, as we know that is so important. Um, so really exciting move for, uh, for young Tom Brown as he joins the Richmond Footy Club and joins a powerhouse. So I wouldn't expect him to walk into the team straight away, but this is a long-term project. For, uh, for the Tigers and for young Tom Brown as we uh, move to pick number 18, and that's the Sydney Swans who have got four minutes to go. Yeah, the nervous ones might be guys who were tipped to go in the top 18. Matthew Johnson not picked yet. Sam Butler not picked yet. And Tyler Sonsi not picked yet. But the Sydney Swans are next. We'll take a break, and then the Sydney Swans will bring us their pick. <laughs> With destinations like the Great Ocean Road, your best adventures are right here in Victoria. Switch your electricity and gas to Red Energy on a Qantas Red Saver plan today and you'll get 15,000 bonus Qantas points plus two points per dollar on every energy bill you pay on time. Switch on to Red Energy now on 131 806 so you can switch off on a Victorian holiday later. Residential customers only. Eligibility criteria and conditions apply. Energy fact sheets available at redenergy.com.au slash EFS. G'day landscape gurus. Want something to make you look even better than you already do? Install Rainbird's Arvan Rotary Sprinkler Nozzles. They're designed to improve water efficiency, throwing the right amount of water effectively and getting the best results from your lawns. You can have a green lawn in no time. Don't believe me? Just look at the MCG's outfield. Smooth and pristine green. They installed Rainbird. So install Rainbird. Rainbird's Arvan Rotary Sprinkler Nozzles. Rainbird, the intelligent use of water. Learn more at rainbird.com. The all-new Kia Sportage medium SUV has been unleashed. There's beauty in being a wild one with an all-new turbocharged engine. Bred to be fearless with a strikingly sculpted exterior, soft touch leather interior, and for a wider perspective, dual 12.3 inch curved display screens. Christmas has come early with the redesigned Kia Sportage. For more info, visit kia.com.au. Kia, movement that inspires. Hi, it's Andrew Bensley here. The John Allen Better Home Living Spring Sale is on again. That means there's massive reductions on hundreds of items like TVs, air conditioners, free Fridges, washers, cooking appliances, beds, and even barbecues. Plus, there's free delivery. And a hot tip, they guarantee to beat any online price on stocked items across the store. Don't miss the John Allen Better Home Living Spring Sale. See the specials at johnallen.com.au. You're listening to SEN's coverage of the 2021 NAB AFL Draft. For tyre power. Draft three tyres, get your fourth tyre free on Falcon Passenger Tyres. Great to have you company, Nick Dalsetta, and I with you live from Marvel Stadium. Pick 18 is in. Sydney Swans have chosen Angus Sheldrick with pick 18. And they've chosen him for Safety Hub. Visit the safetyhub.com.au. Visit Safety Hub at 3 Cubit Way, down in on South or the safetyhub.com.au. And what I like about the Sydney Swans, Duano, they've been sitting there waiting patiently for pick number 18, which they got young Angus in. They didn't muck around, OK? So we've taken <laughs> yep. about the last couple of hours where we think they've been just posturing, just waiting for the moment for their phone to ring or have been making calls, which we don't even know if anyone was on the, on the other end of the line. Sydney Swans don't muck, muck around. Horse, let's just put the uh, young Angus uh, out of his misery. He takes, uh, he goes uh, pick number 18 and we heading to the Sydney Swans, which is fantastic. But this is an interesting one, and this is a pick that moved around quite a bit. Pick number 19, the Melbourne Football Club are currently holding out the reigning premiers with two minutes and 45 seconds to go until they have to read out a young man's name. So some uh, heavy hitters in that room as you look through, senior coaches, a handful of uh, assistants as well. So Gary Purd in the background. But another opportunity to add to their list off the back of what they did last year, which was exceptional. Do I know? So Cal Toomey had Matthew Johnson going pick eight. 
in his phantom draft. Fox Footy had Matthew Johnson about pick 13. He hasn't gone yet. Sam Butler also is expected to be in the top 18. Here's Melbourne's pick with Gil McLaughlin. Club have selected Jacob Van Roon from Claremont. Jacob Van Roon. So they've gone with the WA boy, Melbourne, with pick 19 in the draft. Jacob Van Roon. And he's had big raps on him as well. He was expected to go somewhere between pick 18 and pick 22, pick 23. Well, Melbourne have jumped and got him pick 19. The boy from Claremont, so another boy from WA coming to their football club. We know what Luke Jackson's done for that mm. footy club in recent years. 194 centimetres, Dueno plays key four, can also go as a key defender, so he can play at both ends of the ground. You just feel like he's a great utility and, and can fill in any role that's uh, required at any particular time. Takes a great grab, contested marks. He is fantastic. He's physical. He uses his strength. He's also versatile, as I touched on, in regards to playing both ends of the ground. Kicks goals when he also goes forward. Needs to work on his tank, which you think for a big guy isn't a huge issue. You can always improve that, particularly as you sit here as a 17, 18-year-old and where he could possibly be. But I like this pick, and it's a very particular pick in regards to that style of player and what he could be for that future. So Jacob Van Ruin taken by Melbourne with pick 19. So just one pick left tonight to round out the top 20. And then we'll start again tomorrow night with picks 21 to Fremantle, 22 to North Melbourne, 23 to Hawthorne. So as it runs right now with three and a half minutes left for the Brisbane Lions with pick 20 to make their call. North Melbourne pick one, Jason Horn Francis, if you haven't heard so far, let's run through them for you. Pick two, Western Bulldogs Sam Darcy, pick three. Finn Callahan's gone to the Giants. Pick four, Nick Dacos has gone to Collingwood. Pick five, Mac Andrews gone to the Gold Coast. Pick six, Josh Rochelle has gone to the Adelaide Crows. Pick seven, Hawthorne, Josh Ward. Pick eight, Fremantle, Jai Amos. Pick nine, Richmond, Josh Gibkus. Pick ten, Fremantle, the local, Neil Erasmus. Pick 11, St Kilda, Nasaya, Wanganoon, Wanganoon, Malera. Pick 12, Port Adelaide, traded up to grab Josh Sin. So Port Adelaide ended up with pick 12 with that trade with the West Coast Eagles. Essendon, pick 13, grabbed Ben Hobbs. West Coast, who dropped to pick 14, grabbed Campbell Chesser. Pick 15, the Giants, Leek Alia. Pick 16, Brisbane, Darcy Wilmot, with that big celebration. And can't wait to see that again. It's great video. Make sure you download it. Absolutely. Pick 17, Richmond, Tom Brown. Pick 18, Sydney, Angus Sheldrick. Pick 19, Melbourne, Jacob Van Ruin. And before we go off air and uh, hand it over to the night crew, the Brisbane Lions have two minutes to round out the first round and the first night of the 2021 draft. And they're still with two minutes and change left to make their decision as to who they get with pick 20. Boys, there's some nervous boys right now hoping their name gets picked out so they don't have to wait until tomorrow. Absolutely, Dueno, and that is the little sub story. So one pick to go in tonight's national draft, and that will complete the first round, and then we move on to tomorrow night, which will complete the remainder of the draft. Then on the following evening, being Friday night, it will be the rookie draft. So it's an exciting moment. Two minutes left for the Brisbane Lions. And we may run out of time on the other side, Duano. So while we have a moment, there's a couple of surprises, as there always is. A couple of shot a little bit higher than what we probably expected going through the phantom drafts and multiple phantom drafts in, in preparation for tonight. But also the other way, there's a couple that have slipped through. So you, you get ready for tomorrow night. There's some good players as that pick is in for the Brisbane Lions, the last pick of round one. Here's Gil, just setting up the anticipation of it. The final pick for tonight. With pick 20, the Brisbane Lions have selected Kai Lohman from the Greater Western Victoria Rebels. So Kai Lohman, Greater Western Victoria Rebels. He's the last pick. Thanks to the Safety Hub. Visit the safetyhub.com.au. Visit Safety Hub at 3 Cubit Way, down in Ong South, or the safetyhub.com.au. And that's going to round out our night here, live at Marvel Stadium for Tyre Power, the number one draft pick for tyre safety and protecting you on the road. Great to have tyre power on board. To wrap it up, Nick Dalsado before we hand over to the news. Oh, just to finish on, well done to Kai as well. He gets his opportunity at the Brisbane Lions. So a couple of boys 
Heading north for the Brizzy Lions, they had picks, uh, the pick uh, moved out to pick 20. So well done for all the men. But just in summary, Dwayne, just to try and give it a little bit of a recap. So as we assume, the top six or so was probably what we were thinking. It was just a matter of where Darcy and Dacos were going to be nominated. We knew that they were before clearly the Pies were going to have an opportunity because they don't come into the draft conversation until picks 36, which has already moved out a couple of picks. So the Pies get their man. The Dogs get their man. Jason Horn Francis goes to the club that we all assume being North Melbourne, who get their first number one draft pick in the history of that football club. But then outside of that, there's a little bit of mixture. Mm. Isn't it? Finn Callahan, we, we assumed he'd go high, and he did. He's gone to the Giants. But outside of that, as I touched on, there's a couple of players. It's probably just a little bit of a sit back and wait and see that they weren't as prevalent or as prominent in their junior career as some of the names that we thought might have been going in the first round. Doesn't make it wrong. Definitely doesn't make it wrong at all. But we're about to see 20 young men that we know of right now start their career next year, and that's exciting times for everybody involved. Yeah, it's been exciting down here at Marble Stadium tonight. It's been a pleasure for Nick Dowsetta and I to be with you live from Marble Stadium. Thanks to the crew who put it all together down here at Marble Stadium tonight and uh, to all those that joined us, Brad Scott included at the start of the program. It uh, has been fun. And it's been something that uh, will live with us forever, especially the Darcy Wilmot mm, celebration. My new favourite player. Tyre Power, the number one draft pick for tyre safety and protecting you on the road, Tyre Power. Make sure you join me for Midday Madness tomorrow. Join the breakfast crew as well. But that's it from the 2021 AFL Draft from Marvel Stadium. Hope you had fun. We certainly did.